Yo, guys, what the fuck? It's good to the second episode of Yo, guys. Yo, guys, so, what is up? Yep. Welcome back to the second episode, which is actually the first. So this is the first time we've recorded this. We're doing these Flip. out of order. So the episode that you just watched, probably the first one, is our very first one. So this is the first time we've recorded. So I yep. pray that all this stuff works. But I think I got it yeah. set up. I was like, yo, let's start at 9.30 tonight and, and it's 11.30. Like, yep, 11.30. Yeah, but shout out to uh, my boy Isai for letting us use set up. Shut up. But uh, let's get into it. So episode two of YoCast, uh, here are the special guests. Special guests, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yep. We got uh, we got Zezzy, Daddy also known Zezzy. as... Yeah, Daddy Zezzy, mm. Zezzy Wezzy. Yep. In my phone, I put him as Zezzy with a mammoth emoji next to it because I felt like that was the only fitting thing. Or you can call him Keegan. Um, he has a lot of AKAs, as in Logan Paul <laughs> as well. Oh. Zizzy, show him right now. All right. There. What's good, Zizzy? Tell Zizzy? him Oh, yeah. Let's, let's introduce him first. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Zizzy, Keegan Karki. Uh, yeah, just p- popped over here, met these little fools. Yep. Uh, wow. Know? We we met so short. Of, like, what was that? Two, three days ago? Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, and like, and we're, me coming we're like from, this. We're so close. Yeah. Me coming from Alpha Land, I thought, you know, was it going to be even real? Then... Just met the two genuine ass dudes right away, so it's pretty lucky. Yeah, Eric, it low key feels like that we've met him for like months. <laughs> he's been over here every single night since yes. he's been here. Every single night, he's he, Ubered here and Ubered back. Yeah, I feel bad. I need to drive you around more. I'll take you home tonight, but <laughs> yep. um, yeah, you got an Airbnb with like two guys you knew from like Instagram, mm-hmm. and then you've just been here like every night. You've been with me yes. most of the time yeah. whenever I've met, been off work. Yeah. And it yeah. was just from them engaging how they met. I met him because he just knew Eric. Yeah. yeah. The the reason he's, he's here is because I've been following him on Instagram. We just followed each other for probably like the past year. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't even know you were coming here. But I was working out in gym two. And I just see this like jar, gargantuic mammoth, yeah, mammoth uh, <laughs> specimen walking yes. down the hallway from gym Absolute one to gym house. two. I was like, oh my God, I know that dude. Like <laughs> at, at Zezzy, at, at Zezzy Flex on Instagram. Yeah. I had no clue he's coming here because uh, first of all, he's super low key, but mm-hmm. I saw him, I was like, there's no way that's him. That, that dude's like seven five. <laughs> I six, know. Six five in yeah. reality, but. You look like you're telling six five. You look like a fucking um, yeah. NFL quarterback. Like, bro, even on this couch, this is a Zezzy sized couch. Like yeah, you look ass. normal on this, but I feel yeah. tiny on here. Um, but yeah, I saw you coming from gym two to gym one. I was like, no freaking way. Yeah. Like that's Zezzy. Likewise. Then immediately we just like dabbed each other up and you're like, yo, what's good? But like, I've never heard your voice on social media. So the first time I met you, I was like, this dude's like mad intimidating. Like <laughs> this isn't the dude I know from like the comments, like with, yeah. <laughs> with the sus emojis, you know, yeah. we all leave sus comments. Yeah. So I was like, this is not that dude. So you caught me super off guard. Yep. Likewise, man. Like it was just crazy. Even seeing, I was like, Oh my God, that's Eric. Like immediately just wanted to, you know, say hi and show love. So it was just like, like I said, energy right off the rip was just solid. And yeah, you know, just a real dude. It's so. nuts. You're the first dude who's like came here that like, I, I didn't know who was coming up, hung out with the most, like, Outside of work and everything, I haven't hung out with anyone like as much as you, but it's been a blast. But yeah, uh, before awesome, we get bro. any further, like we obviously know Zezzy, Zezzy Daddy, but um, just introduce yourself. Yeah, I was gonna like, say introduce yourself. Yeah, in like, Hoss. In like um, <laughs> under a minute, because we'll get to know him a lot better. But like in under a minute, introduce like who you are, like why you're here, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, Zezzy is my alias. Uh, my real name is Keegan Karki. Um, some people might know me from maybe some hockey stuff, um, but I'm from Minnesota, uh, Sartell, Minnesota. Grew up in a small town. Um, you know, did high school hockey. Was an athlete my whole life. Um, had a, had a pretty you know decently successful hockey career in my opinion, um, which just finished up in 2020. Did you go pro? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So I'm pretty humble about and it. You're but 22. So you're younger than me. Yeah. Um, uh, it was mid. You know, I had a mid <laughs> mid season. Um, went pro <laughs> yeah so mvp of my, of my team. <laughs> so yeah then i've always been in the gym um i was been lifting weights since 13 so i um, always had a passion for it then this last year kind of got put onto it by one of my buddies brandon almshide who's a photographer and he shot me a, a reel in miami and it, it just hit like 50k so i was like all right i'll buy a camera and start doing this so um, my goal isn't to be an influencer i'm more of a business guy but it's yeah. just fun i really just enjoy doing it so yeah he's good he's nice with the camera too as well Thanks, oh, man. Nasty yeah, videography yeah. photography yeah. All we'll that, get into all that more of you <laughs> more of you into like the business side uh in a little bit but like talk about hockey like that's a huge part of your life that i have never known from yes. looking at your your uh, yeah. your content but like, when did you start playing hockey? Like, how did mm-hmm. you go pro? Uh, like, explain on that. Mm-hmm. So, 
I mean, coming from Minnesota, it's just like built into the culture, I feel like, in the Midwest and Canada. Um, hockey's kind of like the sport that's like the, the football of Texas, I would say. So um, just grew up into it. Always wanted to play. My brother uh, played as well. He was two years older than me. Um, and kind of just took off from there. I always had natural athleticism and, you know, picked up on something when I applied myself. So I got pretty good at it. I was a forward to start with, and I was kind of a chubbier kid growing up, always a heavier set kid. So I wanted to switch to goalie because it was less skating um, and less cardio. So I played goalie, and then that ended up just kind of – I taught myself all the way up until about 13 um, and just started just picking up, and I just got put on, you know, AAA teams, um, played one year of high school hockey, went to the state tournament in Minnesota. If anyone knows what that is, it's, I mean, it's a huge deal in Minnesota. Um, popped off there at a pretty good game. And then from there, kind of just spawned, you know, D1 offers and, you know, talks and that kind of stuff. Picked up my agency, um, had my first agent at about 14. Um, yeah, then played one year high school hockey, then made the, the U.S. national team based out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, played there for about a year and a half and then um, left them and played in the USHL for three years, United States Hockey League. It's tier one junior hockey in the United States. Um, kind of got, was a bet, was kind of tossed around between teams between there. Um, due to my own implications as well as just kind of as hockey goes and then um, yes yeah, signed pro or professional in the WHL and played there for about two and a half so just finished up in 2020 and then you know kind of just started doing this so yeah a pretty good career <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> that's you know, wild NHL just drafts, at, at that age like, yeah are, were, are yeah, other people you right like now? your age in pro that early or were you just like younger than most people wait Zizzy how old are you right now I'm 22 22 yeah that's right birthday's in February um, wow. But yeah, there's a lot of different routes you can go. Like you can go call. Like it's not like a normal sport where you play football and you like you go to high school. Next thing you know, you're going to college and now you're thinking yeah. NFL. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of layers to the sport, which is why there's a lot of opportunity for growth and for longevity in the sport. Um, but yeah, so you know you can either go the college route and you know be an amateur and you know study and you know be a part of yeah, the that's social. just like a full time job, right? Yeah, exactly, or right you can do, you know, play professional and sign and get paid. And so that's what considers you professional um, and get pay compensated for it. But your only thing you focus on and allocate your time to is just hockey. There's no distractions. Yeah. There's no social life. There's no, you know, classes and stuff like that. So um, how I'm wired, I think that was best for me to do that and to just focus on tunnel vision on hockey. Yeah. So. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. So at what age did you know that, like, I can definitely go professional with this? Like, I can do it, like, 100%. Mm. That's a really good question. Honestly, that probably didn't hit me until about, I would say 16, 15 or 16 when I played in that high school hockey tournament and just started getting like calls. I mean, I would be in school and just be getting texts from like Boston University or, you know, yeah. like all these other big D1 schools. Like, um, I kind of thought once there, I was like, all right, I really, you know, if I apply myself, I can really do this and take it somewhere and, you know, be someone in that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So what was like the switch then in your head that you were like, damn, I'm dropping that to go into the fitness more related stuff and like yeah, business it's a really good question you know what i mean like what was that initial like well first was it like, like how night? long did you play how many years did you play professionally um i played literally from 20 2019 to the end of or 2018 to the end of 2020 so not that long really um but like anything like the average career is two to three years in pro hockey so um let alone that it was it was up to me like I, I really didn't apply myself fully i was always really passionate about a lot of things in life i always was always you know i always thought i was confident in a lot of my skill sets and other things so i always knew hockey wasn't the only thing for me i know a yeah. lot of people you know uh, struggle with that they think that that's their only thing they're good at or the only thing they can but they never tried other things so i've always had a lot of other life experiences that have allowed me to be passionate about other things um, so I kind of just, yeah, I've always been passionate about fitness and, you know, believed in myself in business always. Um, and so I wanted to just pursue that and be, you know, start my adult life, I should say. Yeah. So that was like the switch, the flip. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, probably the switch. And then, you know, I just lost love, lost natural love for it. Like it became more of a job, you know, became more, I felt like more like a chess piece, like a number in the game, um, you know, and just wanted to you know be happy above anything so i chose happiness yeah you know above everything no, i'm sure. all about that and like with any professional sport you don't have to say like exactly how much money you're making but like i i feel like i think you're making some good money at such a young age what was that like um you know like still being a teenager Honestly, dude, like it, the money isn't that, it wasn't something that's that crazy. It's really the value you're getting. So yeah. you're getting paid. Yes, you're getting paid and you're not, you don't have any expenses and, you know, things are all paid for and stuff like that. So it's smart what you do with the money. But um, 
you get paid and every year you get pull you play in this league that I played in, you get a whole year's worth of college put aside for you. Mm -hmm. So really your salary is cut in half, fed half of it's as cash, half of it as put his way as, as you know, scholarship money. So um, if I choose to not go to school and use that money, then it just goes away. Yeah. So I have to use it to go to, to go to school. So it's like double edged sword, right? So, Dude, I was literally just going to say that um, when you talk about money in that aspect too, it's like when you're in a situation where, you know, you're in college or something, or let's just say like you're in, not even in college, just like in any outside job, right? You hate it, you know? For example, like one of my friends, like he did stock, he does these like stocks because his dad does it, right? And he taught mm -hmm. him and he's mm -hmm. my age. He makes a lot of money, but he hates it, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, bro, Stan, like I would literally make way less money to do it like you're doing because I love fitness. I want to like go out there and show my personality more and do all that stuff and way late, make way less mm -hmm. than what he makes just because it makes him Happy. happier. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's exactly. like, yeah, it's, it's that crazy. Risk, right. If Literally, you believe in dude. yourself and what you do, then take that risk. Yeah. You know it's going to pay off. For yeah. Sure. That's why I'm out here. Like I went to college, um, you know, graduated at 22, but I can be making a lot more money with, my degree that I have now with like, you know, if I want to go get my CPA or whatever, but like, I love what I do in life and like I'm making, you know, decent money off it now compared to a year ago. It's a lot of progress, but which leads me to my uh, next point. Like you didn't go to college. Like, would you even consider going back or like, what are your, what are your viewpoints on that? So I, I'm a big strategic guy. I think everything I do is a very strategic in how I place myself and where I place myself. Um, so I really want to utilize this opportunity in the next, let's say, three or four years. Um, for my career is going now, if I see a, an avenue where, okay, I can really add a big, you know, sharp tool to my tool set, um, maybe I need a, you know, an accounting degree or whatever that is, I want to strategically be able to get that versus me just feeling like, oh, I should use it, I should go to school, let me get a business degree, let me get a, you know, a mark, like these other, you know, bullshit um, degrees that really don't have a, a, sh a lot of value and experience yeah. is the more of the value. So when something comes up, I think that I'll use it like that. But for now, like, um, you know, I, I don't think I need like degree really yeah no 100 percent. so yeah that's so true were you creating content while you're playing hockey and did you go immediately from hockey to like your ventures now and like creating content on the side like mm -hmm. what did that look like so i've always been into instagram i've loved instagram and youtube has been my two main things since literally it came out for both of them so i've always so you have hockey content on your instagram i have hockey content on my youtube a, a few videos oh, on my youtube sick. like how to fucking just like some shots. goalie like <laughs> training videos yeah. and like stuff like that Damn, um, but i never made I, watch those. I never made content for, for like hockey or like it was yeah. always personal right? i didn't I like, know that but because like i just know you from instagram i had no clue whatsoever you never spoke about it like on your stories mm -hmm. no feed posts no nothing which is interesting but um yeah yeah back to um you know going from hockey to creating content like all that yeah so i've always just been in the instagram taking pictures i like um you know lifestyle stuff but literally like my i would say i'd call him like my mentor uh his name is brandon Almshide. uh he got me into photography and just being a creator and showed me like how you can monetize your life and you know he just travels all the time and i just really looked up to that and him and you know how dialed he is in his life and how business mindset he was and we went on a trip to miami he contracted me as a model um for a watch company um and from there, like it was such the most influential trip almost of my life and right. spawned like that. I'm like, all right, buy How a old camera. Were you? This was literally like last or I have a year ago memories today on my Snapchat. Damn. Like so almost like a year ago I started like you doing actually Instagram. Right. I only do Instagram, but um the Instagram stuff. So. That's yeah. nuts. You're kinda like standing well, we, we're that like that known for too. Instagram. So like that's my main platform. I love yeah. it. I'm trying to get more into YouTube, but Instagram's just always been that that thing. I don't know. Hundred percent. No, I'm just, I'm literally just focusing on like YouTube, like literally, like I'm, I'm going to put all my effort into that. Yeah. Now. If you have Instagram and YouTube down, like you're set, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you need TikTok. I mean, it's going to help you, but, um, like Instagram, I don't know. I just love the way that the platform works and how like, like feed posts are my thing. Like I'm really into photography and it's really, I picked that up in the mm -hmm. last six months, but that's where you can really bring it out. Like you can't really post photos like that on TikTok unless it's like the cover of the TikTok, whatever. Right. right. But, um, yeah, like it, Going back to um, like content, like you're low key about a lot of like the business you do. We've kind of hinted at like you're a big business guy. So like explain that because again, from your content, I wouldn't know like the things that you do like that behind the true. scenes. Because mm -hmm. for business, you almost want to like push out content now. Like, right. That's like the that's like the goal to mm -hmm. get your shit to like blow up. Right, and I take accountability. Right. But I don't do that for sure. Um, 
But for me, my kind of my thing, I apply my own marketing strategy to my Instagram. So what that is, is I didn't go for numbers. I'm not going for having as, all these numbers as quick as possible. I'm playing the long game as in building a close knit followers who just literally will, will fuck with you for what you do and who you are and um, building up a, a quality of enough base up, let's say whatever that monetary number is to you in your head. Um, but where then you can launch, okay, I'm going to launch a clothing company that has, you know, 100 units or 150 units per drop. I'm always going to sell it the first couple. That creates constant, you know, cash revenue right. for my company. Reinvest, 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 keep building, put money into ads, put money into, you know, content, stuff like that. And then it kind of starts that, you know, that wheel, that fire. So, I, you know, I built that a little bit in hockey, just kind of with word of mouth and my name and stuff. So, um, I want to build that through the Instagram a little bit through Zezzy Flex and my, my brain, my value, my insight and get people to, you know, enjoy my brain for what it is. So they'll want to then, you know, support me. So, yeah. And his aesthetic is nice as <laughs> on IG. No, like it's literally like the, it's so like clean. exactly like it's kind of like Eric and I it's like I like the dark crazy aesthetic. Clean. You, guys you know what are I mean? Like dark clean. black aesthetic, like nice, you know, natural look. And Eric's like the same way. You know, it's more like good ass flicks though. It's just so like it's so good your, quality, your but we're both good quality because mm -hmm. we will not post an iPhone pic. Yeah, never, <laughs> you know, that's never. the freaking shit that's gonna blow up on the explore page. Is the freaking iPhone goddamn pics? Yes, with a sweat. One hundred percent, literally, bro. In a mirror that's got like stains all over. I know, it. fucking you know, like <laughs> like flies yeah, on it's it. It's edited like on the some Instagram cream, app. Some yeah. hidden cream on the mirrors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. explore page is something else. We got to do like a little segment about that. I literally. know, but oh um, my god, dude. <laughs> no, like what what kind of business are you involved in? Like what do you specifically do right now that mm -hmm. you delegate majority of your time to? Mm -hmm. So the reason why, so I moved out to Arizona, uh, to Tempe, um, for a company called Iron Wild. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a fitness slash lifestyle clothing company that, um, you know, has a really, you know, good meaning and, you know, good value to You're wear. You're wearing it right now, right? Um, I'm wearing the shorts right now, mesh shorts. Uh, we got it, which are the comfiest shorts. But um, yeah, so they- In the jewel- the jewelry too, yeah. yeah the, the chains, drip. yep. The chains too, as well. That's your that's your brand. Yeah, which are probably dropping this week too. Oh <laughs> shit! Hell yeah! Plug yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah plug yeah. it right now, right now. No, yeah, you got Iron Will Code Zezzy. Hey. Um, we got a bunch of stuff, but uh, yeah, show them that shit. Yeah, like yeah. that's hard. Just peep the oh, website or the Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, they sh they reached out to me. I was always kind of waiting out for you know a good opportunity. I, d I don't mm. have these crazy numbers, so I didn't expect anything, right? But um, you know, they reached out and wanted to just genuinely get to know me. They wanted to get on a Zoom call, um, and from there, the energy was just you know super genuine and real and authentic. And you know, I flew out to them literally the next week or the next two weeks after that. Stayed with um, Matt Stover, the the COO, um, and it. literally like we'd be up till like you know like we've been doing right, like yeah, like two yeah, we've two, been going. He's, he's like, been Ubering back at like three three yeah. thirty a.m. Yeah. Yeah, like just chopping like it up, ass. like just on real some real shit. So and Eric over here is gonna wake up at seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm he's getting get two hours no of sleep, sleep in a week, it's bro. That's awful. what happened to me. That's why I slept in that one day for like eighteen yeah, hours. But it's been so much fun for real, man. Like oh having you over here every night. Yeah, mad dude, chill. I've been, dude, it's oh, been bro, amazing, it's been amazing. Man. Yeah, seriously, Literally, it's been bro. all love, like real yeah, love. Dude. Like I, I, I'm blown away, really. Like hell yeah, by the experience. So right. I couldn't have asked for a. And you just give me like gorilla mode and stuff. Like I was like, dude, you don't have to do that. Like, but that's amazing. Like that's real love. Dude, yeah, that's how I do it, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, we got off track. Uh, back to yeah. Iron World. So, um, so yeah, so they, you know, wanted to bring me on. They, they liked, you know, my captions and the value that I was bringing, you know, to my audience and, you know, messed with my brain and they, you know, fucked with my brain and stuff. So, um, you know, got on the Zoom call and from there, like, they just wanted to hear my story and who I was and um, flew out to them, stayed with Matt Stover, um, you know, chopped it up with him and Derek, which is both kind of the main owners. Um, and it was just literally like family and love from there. And, you know, they wanted to take a chance of me and took a chance on them and, you know, signed me as an athlete first. Um, and then I told them like, hey, I, you know, I gave them my skill set, gave them my story, and they were like, hey, we, you know, love, you know, we see your your value, and we love to get you in, you know, to help with the brand more. So, took the risk, packed my stuff, you know, Penske truck, towed, you know, towed my car behind it, yeah. drove out to Arizona, um, you know, picked up an apartment there, literally two or three that weekend. I was out there, signed a lease the next week. Um, Good shit, dude. Came out and then, yeah. So I do like Making marketing, moves. like I said, and yes, sir. Um, you know, like a strategic, creative mind. So, um, you know, ideally, chief of marketing, and you know, I do a lot of marketing. Dude, think about how we all have that similar mindset. Yeah. Of we yeah. all that I feel like that's a big reason why we're like we all connected so fast because it's like we all are like have our mindset of like oh we got to make that huge move yeah just by we ourselves all, like, mentally it, you know you did it. I did it, and you did it. Dude, the more risk, the more reward. Like, That's what I'm saying. And more, think how many yeah, people have done that. That's ahead right. of us, way ahead of us that are up at the top. Right. Yeah, who've been doing it a lot longer. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. four years. Like how long? You've only been in Arizona a short while. 
two months, maybe yeah. not even really two months. Yeah. Two months. So all really. this has happened so recently. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. Yeah, crazy. and for me, it's like that's literally it's literally been like two two three months. Yeah, <laughs> dead ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah, it's dude. like I'm fully moved in here now. Yeah, it's wild. And we're running it up, <laughs> like literally. That's why I'm glad like we got this whole podcast set up. This what I'm like, saying. You just got out here like now's the time to crank them out. This yeah, what I'm saying. Sure. Balls to the walls right when we get yeah. in and fucking <laughs> we're in debt. <laughs> who, who cares, bro? We're grinding. <laughs> yeah. Content. That's what I'm saying. All right. Like so deadass, that's what you that's what you gotta do. You gotta work from the fucking underground up. One thousand percent. All right. So for Iron Will, like you're mm-hmm. going to work for the day, like what are you doing? Yeah, so my two roles are the roles that I, you know, have my hands on mostly are content managing. So, you know, we're building out drops, you know, months and months and months ahead. So we're building out what does the lookbook look like? Where is it being shot? Who are the models for the shoot? Um, you know, what is the grid on the Instagram going to look like? You know, what what kind of mood are we going for? Are we doing, you know, where's our lifestyle going to be? Um, you know, a lot of things like that. But just like allocation, like, you know, who's the models? Is everyone set up? What size, you know, shirts do we have? Do we, do we have the men even? Um, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, songs, inspiration for it, all those things, which I'm now, you know, we're transitioning into that right now with Derek um, for me to just, you know, kind of take it and run with it. Um, and this for Iron Winter will kind of be that. Um, and then as well as, you know, marketing. So taking a look at the back end of their website, optimizing their SEO, um, all of our keywords, looking at our Google ads, making sure that, you know, we're dialing in our, our CPC and, you know, all of our cost per clicks and stuff like that. So um, marketing at all ends and there's always having a brand awareness. So I, I'm a big branding guy. Um, so always having, making sure eyes are always coming into onto us as well as we're going out to other people and making sure that we're saying, hey, we're right here, having a shark mentality online versus just expecting everyone, you know, the algorithm just to feed you all the time, right? So um, just having constant eyes and bringing constant just awareness to the brand. So that's kind of my main goal there. So, or my main job there. Then I also work for a production company called Voyage Pro where I'm PPIM, which is post-production inspection manager. Um, so I kind of oversee all video and photo projects that go out before they go to the client. And I check color grade, contrast, sound, design, all those kinds of things, send edits back to the editors or say it's good to go. All right. Dude, That's real so quick, dude, you make me feel dumb. Like, <laughs> no. yeah. throwing all those terms around, like, it's I kinda, crazy, I kind of like, zoned I wish out I there. Had, yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> left and right. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Like, it's crazy. I, I wish I had like your brain cells inside of my, my brain <laughs> yeah, and apply nuts. it to what I'm doing. Well, dude, literally, the f- you're very intelligent. Eric, what did you think about? What do you mean? Like when he started saying all that shit, when it started confusing you. Oh, just he's intelligent. Like he knows his shit. Dude, that's it, what I was thinking about. And crazy. then at I such, feel like he was such saying such age. like intelligent stuff that I was like, damn. And then I was like zoned out. And then I started looking at, I was started looking at that anabar yeah. and I was like, damn, I was like, that, that cinnamon, that, that s'mores anabar looks good as hell. Yeah, it looks tasty. <laughs> this guy's a, a code ogle. All, code all ogle anabars. on anabars, yeah. But just yeah. how you think about that with me is how, like, I've already picked up on photo editing from you, Photoshop. Yeah. Like, I've let you know that too. Yeah, like, it's I've sick. been very appreciative it's of cool what I've learned. to see someone appreciate your work. Like, yeah, dude. And that's why I was drawn to your page, well, like, drawn to you in the first place was the amount of work I knew that you put in, the detail you loved yeah. and put into your photos. And mm-hmm. I just really fuck with that. Yeah. And, I, no. and that I changed do, so you know? fast, Eric. I remember your photos a year ago, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, if you scroll through my feed, just how much my content's changed has really been in the last three months when I got my new setup, the one we're recording on right now. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I, I just, the more that, like, I learn, the more passionate I get about it. I mm-hmm. feel like that's the same thing for you with business and, like, growing, Anything. like, this company is, like, the more you see a return on it, the more you see it grow, the more you, like, grow as a person, the more motivated and just, like, you know, the farther you take it. Mm-hmm. And just always being like, always being a student, like with anything in life, just always knowing and being humble that we don't know everything and no one knows everything. So you should always just shut the fuck up and listen. Like just listen, observe, listen, and retain information. Don't just let it go through your brain and, you know, just pick up on new tools. Like we have, everyone has a big toolbox, but no one has, not everyone has the same tools. So yeah, yeah, as many tools as you can, ditch the ones you don't like, you know, hone in on the ones you want, sharpen the ones you like, but yeah, you know, always just learning. I love your terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just big analogy just guy. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, damn, I am in school right now. <laughs> yeah. I like teaching. It's fun. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. but yeah, it's cool to see Grab someone my lunch like that. Box. <laughs> Going to recess. I learned that quick. Like, you're you're a very like observing person. Like, you listen mm-hmm. a lot, and it's like you don't see that too often, especially with the, I guess, like types of people we're around. Everyone's like very entrepreneurial, and like you know, egos can come into play because we're around a lot of people who are on social media, and everyone's mm-hmm. kind of like trying to be that first one to talk and like 
feel like they kind of like own the environment in which they're speaking in and they're not willing mm. to like take a step back, like mm. listen and just, you know, observe. But I, I feel like you do a really good jo job of that. And that's why like you're so successful with stuff. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. Like a lot of that comes down to, I think your, your lifestyle, what you consume, your environment, like I'll go, I could go into this for hours, but like dopamine detoxes, like yeah. limiting how much, you know, stuff you consume media and like just all that extra garbage. Wait, you know? like, yeah, I know. And what, what are benefits that you can consume though? What are what? Some benefits of like stuff that you can consume. Though. Oh, because you can control what you consume. Exactly. I think you can, right. you know, you could, you could set up your whole following in your feed to be in like, mm -hmm. you know, puppies, informational stuff, engineering, money, business. Um, you know, you can set it up like that, right? But we're not all perfect and we don't all do that. And that's not what we're all into. So um, that's where you go into like utilizing those things as best as you can. But that takes self accountability and discipline, like to actually yeah. do it. Like you actually got to clean out your stuff and mm -hmm. actually do it. You know, like that's that step that gets in the way of people actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not perfect. I haven't done that completely either, but I don't consume TikTok, Twitter. Um, I don't go on any of that stuff. I don't yeah. even know. Like I haven't logged into know. Twitter in probably like two oh, years. Bro, yeah. same. I used it in high school because yeah. I'd always like post my girlfriend on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every, and then like Retweet. whenever it's someone's birthday, everyone yeah. like yeah. tweets out happy birthday. And it's like birthday. the same, like 12 photos <laughs> yeah. used among Eight everyone. Retweets. And it's all like group photos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, dude. I, I don't miss Twitter. <laughs> no, I don't, no. man. I don't either. And it'd just be like, yeah, yeah. It would it'd be, be so weird bad. to have like a, a fitness Twitter, you know? Yeah. Because I feel like yeah. a lot of like bigger names, like a lot of like famous bodybuilders, like will use uh, Twitter. Like, because mm -hmm. it's, it, it was, it's low key, like, kind of was back older there, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Real quick. Um, so our record time is 30 minutes, and I set a timer for 29. So I'm going to reset everything. We're going to start back over. So next clip. Okay, we're back. We just uh, took a little rice cake break. <laughs> Apple cinnamon. Stan got me a bag today. Yep. Appreciate that. Thank you. Wait. There it is. There it is. All right, real, real, real quick. Uh, favorite rice cake flavor? Fuck. Yep. Both of y'all. Well, I know what mine is. It's apple cinnamon for shout. Bob shout. Mine's probably chocolate or, or apple cinnamon. Yeah. If I didn't care about macros, I'd say chocolate. Yeah, yeah. But I did find everything bagel. Flavor. Yes, I target the other day. That one's very good. Never find them. Do you know ever. what one is also very good? But I like. Oh, it's the mini ones. No, it's no, it's the, the tomato basil. Ones. Yeah, I tomato only, basil. Only find the mini ones. The tomato basil ones are very good. Yeah, I just don't think they're as good as apple cinnamon. Yeah, you know apple I mean? cinnamon never misses. But I, dude, caramel's like I feel like a little bit better than apple cinnamon. Like maybe yeah. like, like a percent. But there's times where I'm just like, damn, I just really need apple cinnamon right now. <laughs> caramel sometimes gets old. Sometimes yeah. it's like, nah, yeah. you know. I had them all prep. I just did straight caramel because Walmart caramel never had like, any other flavors for a reason. This boy is munching right this now. This rice cake. All right, you good? Mm. <laughs> Okay. Dry mouth. Um, yeah, let's get back to it. Enough about rice cakes. Hey, drop your favorite rice cake flavor in the comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For mine, temporarily, everything, but overall, probably caramel. Gotta say. Anyways, um, so. Do you know what we should do is we should do something <laughs> like, um, we should do like, send someone a, just a thing of rice cakes for like comments. Yeah, that'd be sick. Like whoever, yeah. whoever mm -hmm. gets like the t most like comment, <laughs> we send them just one bag of rice cakes for for free yeah let's like get we in should the works. do that because like you know what i mean because then yeah. everyone's like oh they do that it's so fun <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll get in the works around the comments right. then let's drop and let's likes. drop the rice cakes if Quaker wants <laughs> so to let's sponsor. Say, whoever has the most liked comment on this video we will send them a bag of rice cakes let's do it all right well, you already said it so we have to do it now so yeah, yeah do what he said we'll send you some rice cakes tag us in your story yep um on ig so yeah, you you're very intelligent. Obviously, that's kind of where we left off at. Where do you think you got that that mindset? Was it from playing hockey? Just like the way you were, you were, um, you know, grew up. Where do you think you had that mindset, or is it always just in, innately in you? If that makes sense. Um, I definitely get. I mean, my brains from my parents and my work ethic from my parents. They both came from nothing, started the business. You know, we're on food stamps when they had us, um, built their businesses up um, from the ground. So I got to kind of see, you know, we have them as 
is my influence, but um, it's it's through my life experience. It's through the things that I've done to myself, the bad things, the good things, the the people that have hurt me, the people that I've hurt, the you know all those types of things that have really made me who I am and you know what I've chosen to do. A lot of kids are confined in you know their space. I was always a kid who was out of the house, getting in trouble, um, you know, yep. hanging out with older people. So I was just kind of was exposed more for the younger. Oh age. yeah, yeah. But um, so you were like a dad early on. <laughs> Yeah. Do you, have, do you have any siblings? I don't think I've asked you. Yeah, I do. I have an older brother whose name is Chandler. Um, I have two younger sisters. One's Ava and one is Talia. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, but no, kind of going off uh, your thing there, uh, I think it was a lot of what came through this was my battle with um, like self-love and anxiety and also like drugs and stuff like that. I think that's where a lot of those self, you know, developmental um, mm-hmm. tactics or ways of thinking and just like valuing life and valuing the time that we have and then utilizing that time. Like, okay, I should be learning. I should be working hard. I should be, you know, doing the things that align with me and not you wasting time doing bullshit with bullshit people around bullshit things. So. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's a huge part of it. Like just like literally like as, a, as anyone says, like surround yourself with, you know, people, and it's like whoever you're near and whoever you're, you're around, you literally like, as much as you don't even want to think it, like you literally will turn into them. Mm-hmm. Like if they're a bad group of people, mm-hmm. you know that, but you're like, nah, like I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna bust out and grind what I do. It's like, nah, man. It's like you'll literally start to fade into like them. Mm-hmm. Dude, energy is definitely contagious, yes. good and bad. Yes, like, their vibrations people think, and sh- all that. Yeah. Sh- yes, dude. People think good, just good energy is contagious. Like bad is seeps into your mind subconsciously, and you don't even realize it. Yep. Like your friend, let's say you go to your friend, all your friend talks about is, uh, you know, emphasizes women and sex, and just like you know, mm-hmm. kind of like sexualizing everything, which isn't a healthy mindset at all. You know, just being a, uh, you know, giving up his body and just you know, like whatever yes, it is, dude. girl or guys, it's like by you just like taking part in that and just like talking yeah, about it yeah that's just a, yeah it, it just goes into your head it dude. gets in your head subconsciously yeah. even if you don't think you're doing it yeah, you don't you're it's still not even, gonna, yeah not even that like you don't even need to think that ever that again but it's still like you yeah. heard it in the back of your head yeah. like your head will like you said subconsciously right. think of that your environment's see, like giving you that it's seeping it into your head it's like you can choose oh i don't do any of that but it's like still you're still your brain is still being consumed in it and next thing you know you might be making that action or doing that yeah. thing and you don't even realize and it's it. not even sexually it's just like yeah. so much it of it just like yeah, literally anything you want. Like anything. doing a job, like, you know, freaking anything, dude. Yeah, literally, literally, you could, anything that you are involved in your life. And then if you are hanging around like that group, you know, it literally, whatever you are, like right. it could affect you in any way. Dude, that's been the biggest, honestly, the biggest transitional point, I think, in my in my career has been changing my environment. Like studying like yeah. AR environments and how to actually change those things. Like I read a lot of self-help books, a lot of, uh, you know, went to a lot of therapy and stuff like that um, and realized like, holy shit, like the people around me, like A, you know, they were doing, you know, this weren't aligning with what I wanted to do. It doesn't have to be necessarily good or bad, but like they just didn't align with what I thought I needed, right? So as soon as I started cutting people out of my life, um, you know, that didn't align with what I do, what I spend my time, what I do on my weekends, what I do, how I think, what my goals are, how highly you think of yourself. Like once you start seeping out that, that baggage and that stuff like that and just putting out energy that you want come to come back forth is like been the most beautiful thing. I've met four guys this last year who have changed my life completely. Um, and shout out Dawson, Tyler, and Tyler. Um, yes, sir. And yeah, so Dawson, surrounding yourself Tyler, with people Tyler. like you guys, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's dude. impossible to not grow and not get better if you're surrounded by constantly exactly. Like, that's why I love Houston. It's man. impossible. Bro. Yes, that's why I love dude, I love it. it does that's why so I had to get for me, around, just being present. Yeah, literally, and that's what I had to do about like my situation too. Like, there was no one in Ohio. Yeah, right. Like, all my friends graduated. It's like, bro, I was working at, as you guys know, like I was literally working at like a burger place, right? It, no one. The motivation there, it was not even a skill of motivation it was just everyone just like you know accepted that they were just like oh my god it was disgusting you yeah. know what i mean just a burger place like a fast food restaurant i worked it too bro it's the same thing there yeah it's and gross. i just like, like grinded on money and i was like bro i can't yeah even though i didn't even choose to be around that environment you know what i mean i just did it for money but then it's like when i'm there it's like it literally affects you Mm-hmm. the environment because everyone's just like you so all, sloppy all facets of life like, yeah. even when you leave work like yeah does. exactly the, the attitude gym, wherever uh, yeah exactly bro it like comes their up, energy yeah it comes down to even like that one guy in work that comes in with that shitty attitude every day like yeah just takes that one guy yeah. that you surround but yourself it's with one, every it's every all day, of them like, bro they're right? all like yeah. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every single yeah. one yeah the right. person on the grill the person on the fryer oh the person on the fucking uh what do you call them npcs yeah yes dude for bots yes 100 percent 
Dude, so, yeah, um, and they, everyone would th- think they like they, they had like more authority over each other. Like, yeah, oh, like oh I'm on fuck, like I'm the fire bro, or like I'm, <laughs> I'm the manager of this, so like you have to listen to me. Yeah, like your type shit. They're like, oh, dude, clean the bathroom. It's the person the inspector's coming, bro. <laughs> call that call that burger beef. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like bro, you gotta chill. Yeah, my you just guy. gotta like people like that need to be remembered of how like minimal their role is in society just because like saying. you're a tear up at a fast food restaurant like what power does that assert you like in, yeah. just in everyday life Dude, everyone like in general it's such a like, small role in society like everyone's it's wild. shit stinks um so we talk about energy right at, at what point or what pivotal moment if you could come up with like not a certain day or just like a certain time period when you decided to switch that environment like at what moment mm-hmm. was that it just that mm-hmm. flip switch, like Stan asked earlier. Yeah, so I threw out my hockey career at the end there. I kind of like was getting into a lot of self-medicating. And, you know, I, I have had chronic anxiety in the majority of my teenage years at least. So I self-medicated through with Xanax with that. And then, you know, antidepressants and whatnot. I was thrown on by doctors and this and that. And then as well as, um, you know, I self-medicated. I got into a little bit of a cocaine phase as well, you know, going through hockey. So um, I had a fallout with that. Caught everything cold turkey. Went through the... the, the Wait, talk about that. Yeah, that like that's, that's, yeah, you that's talked crazy. about it a little bit yeah, with us. Like, yeah, like, yeah, kind of just like, like describe it because it. it's like people like you'll say that right. Like if I I think if I was listening to you right now, I'd be like, oh damn, like I I just heard you say it, but it's like, what is that? Like I I heard, I know what that is, but like I don't know what like goes through that. Like you know what I mean? Like describe. Yeah, first off, all what that is like. All recreational drugs bad. Do not touch. Do not do anything that is synthetic. Nothing that's going to you know ruin your life. Don't. It's not worth it. Don't start. Never worth it. Anyways. Yeah. um yeah, so a big, I have a you know obsessive I think personality. I think that I get into things and I have an addiction to addiction to personality as well. So identifying those things is a huge part of emotional intelligence and emotional maturity. Um, but realizing that I you know I was self medicating with Xanax um, for about two and a half years straight. And if anyone Jeez. doesn't know how harsh benzodiazepines are, I mean it ruins your nervous system. It ruins. What is Xanax do again? It's a benzodiazepine, so it kind of slows down your central nervous system to calm you down. It's meant for panic attacks, right? To just yeah. calm your nervous system and your cardiovascular system down. Um, so that was your antidepressant? That was, yeah, I mean, I was on those as, on separately as well. Those are yeah. like SSRIs, they're called, um, but, which uh, uh, which acts on the, uh, the serotonin receptor. But the but Xanax... Um, just is technically is a downer it's mm-hmm. it's its own class as a benzo but um yeah so you i mean it's like a, a, a drunk like feeling yeah I w- okay i was gonna say what do you like feel compared to like you know smoking yeah it's definitely de- it's more intoxicating it's like it dissociates yourself yourself more so you don't know do you what get you're like doing. the spins or dizzy no honestly like you feel like it's a sort of like a drunk but you you black out faster you do stupider stuff you don't think um you're you're slow like you're really slow you yeah. can't you'll talk to someone who's on xanax and they don't even know what they said five seconds ago yeah, like it's not it's crazy. like it's really crazy like they call them bar tards yeah well, <laughs> i've heard like i don't know if it's true like just literally kills your brain cells kills you them know? fries them there was a kid that i went to school with i won't say his name but in my freshman <laughs> dorm room, he jumped out of the third story window. It's glass, and thank God it's it's only three stories. Right, he jumped out, broke all the glass, like Damn. blood all over himself. I wasn't at school oh. at the time. He's a uh, the year above me, so but the story went around my whole school. Jumped out, and he was off his of Xanax, mm. and just Damn. like his yeah. whole body was messed up. There's crazy stories, bro. If you look on Google, like just like top Xanax stories, bro, you could find some wild ass shit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I have some, that's yeah. nuts. I have some crazy ones too as well, but. It just pretty Damn, much makes see, you like, stupid. Though, bro, this man least. has stories about <laughs> every single thing. That's why it's like I want you to start like talking about that because yeah, it's yeah, like, no, we, have, like we, we don't have a lot. Like, yeah, I feel like. I feel like this could go. This could be like a ten-hour podcast <laughs> on his yeah. stories. That's why I wanted to get him on so bad. Yeah, he so leaves like, on that's, like Tuesday. That's what I'm saying. So you should like, I want to like you should just tell tell you like your top like three biggest mm-hmm. stories. I mean, whoa, biggest stories. That's what I'm saying. I mean, might as well. It's like, when else are you going to tell this? Right. No, for sure. Anyway. Exactly. It's like, what do you. Yeah. 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 So I went through hockey career. I mean, you don't have to, though. Yeah. Doing. I was on Xanax for two years um, and as well as picked up a, a cocaine addiction as well throughout that. I'm not proud of it, but I can come to terms with it and talk about it because see, that's I've already came though. to terms that. with it. That's, yeah. yeah, see, that's, exactly. that's so healthy, dude. You know? yeah. like, I've done the work, the emotional work on yeah, the back end to talk about it. Yeah, like, think about it. Like, explain that to us. Yeah, I know. And that's how like almost like depression starts. Like It builds up and they can't even talk about it. Right. And it's just in their head locked in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. how, that's like a good way to, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. That's so good, dude. 
Yeah, so I mean, I went through the you know worst story with Xanax. It's like you don't know what you're doing, right? You forget what you're doing. So um, I got kicked off a hockey team actually called the Omaha Lancers. Um, this is I've never publicly even said this, but um, yeah. So I, I took I was my roommate I was with got got traded that night, and it was a Sunday. I had school on Monday, and he's like, "Dude, just hang out with me. Let's smoke. Let's you know do Xanax, whatever." And we did that, and I didn't know they were double dose Xanax bars that I bought off the dark web. Damn. And we blacked out from Sunday to Wednesday. Like oh I, my God. The, the only remember like I woke up and I what? checked my phone. It said Wednesday, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like. Literally, what the fuck? Like, did it go I, so by you like eat? that, or did you just like you have like spurts of like memories in it, but you don't remember like Wait, what so you do? How did you not like eat or drink? You that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't remember doing any of that stuff. I just remember like I got into a hit, I got into a hit, and well, how I got kicked off the team, I'll go into that. Was like, I, I guess I was going to sc- we, me and my buddy, we were fucked up all night, you know, driving. We crap, we totaled his truck that night, went home the next morning. I How'd went you to get s- home. That's what I'm saying. We don't know. I just, I just know all. I just know oh these bits gosh, and pieces because, like, we gotten. You know, there's real implications with yeah, totaling a yeah. truck. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. And um, That's insane. yeah. So then the next morning, I was ripping to school and I was driving a, a straight pipe so black this is, charger. This is when you're still. Yeah, still. This black. is Monday. Oh this God. is Monday morning. What? And uh, I drive a, a straight it wasn't pipe dreams? charger. Like, no, dude. How do you know it was not a dream though? Because I got charged with a hit and run. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I hit. I guess I hit someone Damn. and I ripped off, and my car's really loud. So someone called it in, and then um, all I remember is I think being on like the floor in the locker room and seeing two officers come down the hallway, and me just like kind of being like, "This probably maybe is for me." Like I didn't yeah. know. Like if I did something, I was like, "Probably." And then yeah, I got kicked off the team, got charged with hit and run. I ended up uh, contacting the guy that I hit and was like, gave him my story. Like, hey man, I'm just a kid. Like, I, you know, I mean really well. Like, I fucked up. Like, I yeah. cashed out my credit card as much as I could at the time. Gave him all that Damn. cash. And then he went on his own to write a letter to the prosecutor, which then dropped my case. So I initially oh got charged with hit and run. I got kicked off the team. But like that just shows yeah. the disgusting aspects of Xanax and drugs in general. Like, it just it makes you do things you don't want to do, wow. you would never do. Like, doesn't align with you as a your person. Yeah. Wait, you know, I'm still like so confused though so it was like an almost like out of body experience like you were literally blacked out that whole yeah, time you're still managing to drive so yeah. you had some sort of consciousness mm-hmm. you know while you're right. yeah while but you're you were blacked out so think about it like if you took that you blacked out right on the couch right mm-hmm. so then it's like you're blacked out and you just get up and you're like still like you're still blacked moving out. Like your brain, it cuts off whatever it is in your mind, your memory thing or whatever that is. Dude, it like cuts that off. But you're still walk. You can walk. You're still doing things. That's the scary part. That's where like people jump off buildings they don't even yeah. wanted to do. Like he probably had no idea he was doing that. Yeah, which is so sad. Like it's wild. He didn't even know. He didn't even. He didn't even know and didn't want to. That's, that's what. Yeah, that's away crazy. So much. Like right. I love having control over. Like he literally like, killed himself and he didn't even want to. Yeah, didn't that's even know nuts. he was doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, didn't even wasn't even there. Like to, he would be like he'd be like yeah I blacked out. And then there's no other memory. He's he pretty dead. much died the day he took. He died the minute he felt the Xanax. Yeah. yeah. He literally died that moment. That was his death. That was his yeah. death sentence right there, which is, that's deep to me. That's, that's nuts. Fuck. And it's like, that's crazy. I don't know if it was LSD or what, but I remember like a long time ago, there's a, a person in Miami who was like on some sort of psychedelic or drug and tried to eat someone's yeah. face off. It was like a zombie case in like Miami. Yeah. There's always like crazy shit Bass happening holes. there, but yeah. Yeah, bro. Bass they're ch- yeah. shit in Ohio, bro. They were, even like I said, the burger restaurant, bro. Like everyone did drugs there, and it was like, literally, it was so bad. And they had like bad cases. Like this kid, like literally, like died almost. Like that I served with. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he did like his That's his nuts. coke was like laced. Like it was literally, it was crazy. And he literally like died. He took it in his car, and he literally like went to hospital. And he said he oh, doesn't yeah. even remember. So he woke up in hospital bed. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, good, All right. So that's how you got kicked off the team. So <laughs> yeah. what did what did you do after that? Um, yeah. No. So I mean, like, dude, I had a big, you know, it was a big fault. My parents were very worried that they weren't going to have their son anymore, that I wasn't going to be mentally the same. And it was just a big, like, you know, big moment of like, hey, man, like people really care about you and you can't be doing this stupid shit. Yeah. Um, especially with all this in front of you, like a hockey career in front of you. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I had, a, you know, had a had a drug phase like that. I got I kicked off the Xanax, uh, went cold turkey, which if anyone knows, uh, you know, has anyone's been into drugs and stuff like that? Like, you're not supposed to quit benzos like that because your heart can literally stop. Like, it, it, it'll it stop. So I went through a week of having seizures every night. And luckily, uh, my girlfriend at the time was the one who kind of kept me, like, literally alive. Um, so I'd have seizures every night because it affects your nervous system, right? So your your brain, your body is expecting it to get that, that you know, sense of, 
you know, turn off almost. So it's yeah. firing. My body wanted to fire and fire and fire. And I had, would having like small, like not grand mall seizures, but like seizures, like, you know, it's crazy, bro. That's like nice. Went Did you have any control through. over yourself during those seizures? Cause I saw one happen at Alphaland actually. Wow. In person, the kid had zero control over himself. What, he, what was he doing out. on the ground? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he had him like a few times or like a few times a year and yeah. I saw it happen in person. But with those like withdrawal seizures, like were the mild, severe, like, could, did you have control of your body? Would you like be conscious during them? Honestly, man, like now that I think about it, like, I don't know. I probably had control, but you really don't like, I mean, your body is just, it's tweaking out and your, your brain isn't getting oxygen. So yeah. you can't think to even like stop it or anything. You just kind of accept it. And it only happens for about 45 seconds to a minute, but it feels like so long, but I knew that was temporary. I knew the at light at the end of the tunnel. I knew it. I knew that exactly. If I just take that pill right there, which I had at the time, cause you can die cause it's kind of a fail safe. Like if I just take that pill, I'll feel better. I'll feel better. Like as I'm profusely sweating and shaking, you know, all those things. So um, you know, just always thought like the time I really wanted to quit. I really wanted to be better. I wanted to be yeah, you know, a good person. That's and, feel better, so. and then do what's beautiful. Anyone else with anxiety? Like I have never felt better and closer to myself since I've been off of every single medication, every single pharma medication. Right. So, um, it just shows like you don't need to have, what those. were you on then? I mean, wow. I mean, everything fluoxetine, um, you know, Xanax obviously, which is called Alprazolam. Um, there was a lot of different SSRIs and these other little mini meds that my psychiatrist at the time put me on, but I, none of those ever did anything. They've always took me away from myself. So the only way to get close to yourself is to read self-help books, go to therapy, learn more about yourself, really do internal reflecting, like take some time away from you know, your friends, your girl, like all those extra things and just really work on yourself, pick up a new hobby, find something else new about yourself. I got into working out really, really heavily two a day, three days, like, yeah. you know, training really hard and, you know, just seeing my body change and, you know, reading books, watch, listening to podcasts that actually help you going to therapy. Like, dude, reading books has been huge. Like I was always the guy in, yeah. high, in school, like, Oh, I don't read books. Yes. I don't, I don't yeah. do that. I don't read books. Like, yeah. you know, so, so tough. Right. But right. dude, like the right book. Oh my gosh. It'll change. Like, what is your, it called? Just in general. Like, I mean, so a lot of not giving a fuck, um, 10, re 10 things, uh, 10 things emotionally stable people do or 10 things. Yeah. Emotionally stable people do, um, the art of excellence. There's, I mean, there's a bunch, I have a bunch I could recommend. Yeah. Um, it's hard to think about on the top of your head right now, but right. Um, that's but yeah, crazy. Self-help books. Anyone that's out there, self-help books. I mean, it could change your life for sure. Yeah, I'm not a big reader, but no. that's what Sam was. Seem like Sam was like when me. you find the right thing to read, like I could read all day. Like right. I remember, I read a guide literally on how to edit photos in Lightroom, like this ebook someone put together, and I was so into it, just like reading because it was more like you know directions on how to do something else. Mm -hmm. But those self help books are directions on how to improve your life, how to you mm -hmm. know grow as a person, blah blah blah. Yeah, emotional intelligence is key. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Key. Like how to literally. separate yourself from someone else. There's a that's what I'm saying. There's a book on it, Sam Grant. Shout out to Sam Grant. He showed me a book, and it's, I'll literally have to pull it off after this, but he showed me a book, and he was telling me how he like, changed his life and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, he needs to literally have a code with his Amazon link because he's gotten like, so many people on this, like Jose Damn. and stuff. Like, it's crazy. I'm, gonna, I'm, about, I'm about to buy it. We should buy like two or three. Yeah. I'll, give it to, I'll give it to you guys. Mm -hmm. That'd be dope. Yeah. But um, it's like, that's, like, that's, that's wild that you can just like look at pages and paper, and that's literally going to change your perspective of like – the way you think and view other things and like and that's vibes you catch from other people that's where my value from my well that's where the inspiration for my instagram went is because i'm i i think the best value is being able to i think free yeah. thinking is really right. rare nowadays people who just think for themselves so i want to give someone an opportunity that percent of chance to think about something differently they had never thought about so like a new perspective on love on you know emotional intelligence on just like anything like you know right. how, to, how to think better how to you know live better like that's really what i want to give to someone to be have my imprint on someone yeah we were talking about that before the pod i was like bro your captions are always like very like deep and like they all make right. sense and like it, it's something to look forward to every day but that's why i really Thanks, like man. your content a lot. because um it's not like explore page no. worthy because it's you know you put a lot of value into it the best explore page posts are like short one-liners which is what i do <laughs> i don't want to see you hit explore right but like for you you don't care about that it's like you want to yeah. put genuine value out there and that's mm -hmm. why you got approached by you know for that brand that you're mm -hmm. working for today but mm -hmm. um I think that's really dope. Like your approach to social media, like mm -hmm. you don't have a crazy amount of followers, but the people that do follow you, like right. really mess with you. And, and like, I really mess with them too. Like yeah. I really try to just support their lives and what they do. That's crazy. It's, so, it's mutual for sure. Yeah. Like you're a deep thinker and that really comes out like in your captions. So yeah, y'all feel go uh, check out at Zezzy flex on IG. Yeah. Just scroll through the content, but um, no, your stuff's really clean. Like 
Um, when did your kind of passion go, you know, you got out of the drug phase, all that. When did your passion turn into creating content, just taking the gym more seriously? Um, you know, mm-hmm. just getting more involved with, with that. Mm-hmm. So I was in a lot of people probably like this, like a relationship that kind of enabled, um, you know, a lot of, uh, dependence. So it's not being interdependent, not being independent, but being dependent on, you know, someone's love, someone's words, someone's, uh, reassurance, um, stuff like that. So I really struggled with that in my first, you know, major relationship. So that was, you know, spawning out of that in 2019, 2020 is kind of the end of my, you know, my drug phase and stuff like that. And it just spawned this whole new, you know, phase of, you know, self-development. And that's where I kind of fell in love with the gym or more that I was before was just like, you know, training my body, seeing the results that you put in or actually you like can see the results you're getting. It's not like bought, it's not purchased. It's not something like that. So I just fell in love with that. And then um, my brain, I've just always been into like philosophy and stoicism and, you know, stuff like that. So I just intertwined the two, like I said, and um, just started presenting my body. It really, I still struggle with this is caring about what people think. Like, I'm the same. Oh yes. I talked about this on my story the other day. Eric Eric and I were talking about that same Mm -hmm. shit the other day. Yeah, like it's tough. Like, and coming from a small, like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you're a small town too. Like, mm-hmm. just like everyone talks and you just know everyone talks. So it's like just the fact that you know that, yeah. you're like, gets in the way of you yeah. just doing what you want. Especially and, in college, because I went to like a medium sized school. So you kind of knew everyone. It was like high school times three, mm-hmm. you know? You see yeah. the same yeah. sorts of people every day. But so, yeah, it's definitely like that. Right. And I, and I will say, though, that when they say that shit, but then. Like down the road, like right now, then yeah, it's it's like totally a turning flips. phase, like right now, almost not obviously all at once. It's like you start to see it coming. Like everyone's like, oh, like the the dudes that would like talk shit behind me, like what the fuck is this guy doing? Is yeah. now like hitting you up, like bro, like you know, I'm uh, I'm gonna be in Houston, bro. I want to see yes. you. or like bro, like uh, I mean, you gotta catch a workout, bro. You know, <laughs> yeah. all, all, like all that shit. And you're like, <laughs> what's well, really the science of projection? Like, huh? Like, any hate is like, just look projection. Look at the text above. Yeah. So right. no, they're projecting their insecurity. They're projecting the fact that they wish they could do that or they don't even think they don't believe in themselves that they could do that. So they have to hate because they're yeah. it's their natural response. Like, and then think about, then go, go back to that thought of you saying that I really struggle with me caring about what other people think. Yeah. Like think about what you guys just fucking said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you're like, oh shit. Like right. why the fuck do I care? Why do I care? Because they're now like on their knees. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like just that, there's just no value. Like who, life's too short. Like we, like I said, we could die, like we're talking about this all week. Like we could go, to, we could drive to the gym tomorrow and just fucking pop. exactly like, just get hit by a bus God, man. or yeah, just get, like, get attacked by a, you know? a bunch of roaches. Yeah, hey, I literally, saw them. dude. Stan, Summer you. said she found one in your bathroom this morning. Stop at like nine because I came out. Yeah, Here we I'm on work today. She's like, yo, look at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not Here true. We, bro. No, on God. Damn, dude. <laughs> I, fuck. There's roaches. That's Anyways, um, I wait. I I want him to say he told one story. Uh, do we have enough time? Uh, we're at three minutes left. Oh, this, bet. Yeah. Okay, so just say like one more thing really fast, like something like maybe like deep as fuck, and then we can kind of just like, wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, just like spawn right, it like that, like a magician, deep as fuck. Um, no, like not. You know what I mean? Because he has so much shit that I feel like we didn't even cover. Yeah, I want to get into some more of your stories on the next um thirty minutes, but. Oh, shit, we have another one? Yeah. Oh, then we're chilling. Oh, dude, I had a really uh, good question. So when you were out of the drug phase, we haven't mentioned your weight yet. <laughs> how, how much do you weigh currently? Yeah. Um, probably 264 today, but I'm holding probably less water. But yeah. two, I'm probably around like 260. Yeah, That's on another crazy. note, he's been fasting all day. Then at night, he just gets like DoorDash and just like the most yeah. like glorious high, cheat food. meal. Oh, you've yeah, ever we should, of. we should, yeah. <laughs> We should like put the picture on our story. Yeah, yeah I'll find <laughs> yeah. it and I'll throw up what he what he ordered yeah. the other night. It looked insane. It was yeah. like something you find on Explore page. On Literally, those, like, oh my god, pages. where was that from? Canes, dude. That was from just some <laughs> random like chicken spot here. That was rated high. <laughs> yeah, in Florida. it was like chicken nachos. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah has all right, so you're two sixty five now. When yeah. you got like out of your drug phase and like you got yeah. really into fitness more, like mm-hmm. how much did you weigh then? Because you you are a, no. a massive human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just like Thanks. I don't know like. King size, like California <laughs> king size. <laughs> Literally. I love that. But um, no, dude, I've always been like 215 to like 218 at the same 6'5 frame. So like that, w- but with like less, way less muscle, a little bit more pudge. Right. Stuff like that. So I cut down naturally 
just like those two, when I got really into motivated, just like cut my life out of for everyone, just was reading books every day, working out. I cut down to 193 naturally um, and just shredded my fucking, my hormones felt like absolute yeah. shit. Like had to eat like a bird every day to like even <laughs> feel like I was looking okay and it just yeah. wasn't sustainable. I've, so. I've been through that phase before. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, that's nuts how much like, just how much size you have because you're very proportionate. Like, dude, you took off a shirt the other day and he has like visible abs at 265 yeah, pounds. Yeah, he's a freak. I'm 185. He's a house. <laughs> Do the math. You're like 80 house. pounds more than me. It's, <laughs> it's wild. More yeah. than that. I honestly don't even know. Like, I couldn't even tell you. Dude, like, you literally got to you gotta keep bulking. Dude, to I want to get insane. You could, I want yeah, to easily become, I said shred like 35, 40 pounds. You could be. I yeah, but not right now. Like having bulk, like the thing about he's this bulk, might as well just push it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he can have him shut down. Yeah. Oh, all right, let's reset it. We'll be back. Bet. I have to piss. Sec. All right, bet. We are back ski, even though for you guys, there was no time difference in between that video. We had another rice cake, <laughs> but, though. Yep, we had, I had like three rice cakes. Because ever since we said rice cakes, I was freaking craving. <laughs> at that. So, but yes, we are back um, from that little piss break as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is he was saying. How large he is. How large he is, correct. Yeah. Oh, I was saying that. Dude. How, like, much, cows were, feel how like much cows big. were you eating at, uh, when you were that big? Um, when I'm like, like when, like when big, when like I'm smaller, when you were like ma- peaked, like peak house. Oh my God. As much as I can fit. Like I, <laughs> I could have, <laughs> I could do six to eight K without even Yo, blinking like in a day. Like my body's not like, how all them know? Like I can like 10 K would be like a breeze yeah. in a day. I remember like, you saying that. Especially with weed, like a breeze, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. It came over. So that's why I've been able to get huge. It's like, I just took nine months. I didn't give a fuck about abs. Didn't give a fuck about, you know, my, my numbers yeah, on look my at you line. Now, bro. Like, You're a fucking house. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I just did that. This and be deadly, you know, so mm-hmm. I just want to get to not shredded, but like, because I don't think that's healthy. I really don't think yeah. being shredded is healthy. Right. I don't, it's hard to maintain to like where I'm yeah, at Yeah, right bro. Now. I felt like not. shit. Most days I feel good now just because my body's so used to it, but I, I totally feel what you mean. Like, if it wasn't for social media, I'd do the same thing as you. Just take time off, like, just get huge while you're young. But with what I'm doing, it just, it's very difficult, you know? Dude, I There's love this thing. Priorities. I love this yeah. thing with um, Greg Doucette. He goes, like, he's like, he's like, the shittier you feel, <laughs> the shredded, more shredded you are. <laughs> Dude, that, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah, we should do a whole podcast. Yeah. He's literally like, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> He's oh like, he's like, the shittier you, you feel, might never do it. the more shredded you're gonna be. <laughs> okay, that's just how it works. You're eating fucking cucumbers and egg whites for breakfast. <laughs> I'm so dead, funny, bro. Uh, yeah, that's that's funny. So what you eat? Like, you told me you like three k now to maintain. Dude, I make. Yeah, I eat like. Oh my god, my girlfriend's gonna hear this and be like, no, he eats like nothing. But um, I what do you actually like? Dead at like, be honest. Like during one day, Monday through Thursday, I'm probably eating. 2000 maybe maybe 1800 calories and i burn How? like my mate like my body probably burns 24 right now? 26 just doing nothing right now yeah you're eating 1800 calories during a day. the week when i have my structure i have I'm in my apartment yeah i have my you know like do you just not get hungry or are you just so busy like i just I, that's not my problem my problem is at night like during the yeah. day i don't even think about food and like to be kind honest of the same way i get back from work at four yeah and at 600 calories you know right that's exactly half the day's over right once but, you're like just chilling, I'm like, okay, food. Yeah. Like, so then know, like, Thursday through mm-hmm. Sunday, you just like, you just kind of don't care. Yeah. So I set up my week. I'm a big lifestyle guy. I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm, I don't, I don't compete. I'm a big, like, you know, set up your lifestyle how you you're want just it to chilling, make you happy. You know? Yeah. Throughout the week when you're busy, if you have responsibility, which you should have responsibility, if you don't go create some responsibility, but, um, mm-hmm. literally like if you have responsibility, you shouldn't be focused on your food. And if you're a bodybuilder, I get it. Mm-hmm. That's what you gotta do. You're, you're, you're competing a hundred percent focus on the food but for me i set myself up on the weekends i don't have to do, think about that and i love going out to eat i love you know having experiences with friends and fine dining and just having the experience of hospitality service right so i love just like trying new foods and just eating what i want like on the weekend yeah. i don't want to have to track and know oh my god like I've, i'm over my calories like right if you're active throughout the week and you're doing you know if you're getting active all day at least for two hours or an hour to two hours a day like you could touch you, you you're not gonna get fat like, yeah really not so that's true. I'm not trying to be the most shredded guy. Shred gets shredded guy. I'm not trying to be an influencer. I'm not trying to be any of that. So yeah. So you would I never compete. That. I'm not going to say never because I every day. Like, I go would, to, like would, the first day I get to Alpha Land, the like, guy asked me like, "Do you? you yeah, right, compete? exactly, like, bro. Because you could you no. could do fucking classic. Easy. Like, would you ever want to get your pro card? Like, is that something that sounds good to you right now? 
I'm try- I'm just trying to enjoy it right now. Just yeah. have fun, getting juicy. Well, and bro, big. yeah, you're 22. Think about it. If you could be 27, still go pro. Right, those guys like there's still guys that don't go pro to like they're 30. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you're yeah. you're so young. Like right. when I talk to you, I feel like like a dad just because how <laughs> big you are, and just like <laughs> mentally, intellectually more ma- more mature. Not more mature, but just the level you are. But anyways, right. yeah, you're a big dude, but um. Love training. Just yeah, because imagine weights. like you're 265 right now. Like you have like visible abs. Like they're there. You cut <laughs> 40 pounds. You'd be 225. Yeah, Dude, I honestly would never go to 220. I'd be like, I want to just sit at like 240, 230, yeah, 235. Could, but you look at my lean. obliques, and that's and crazy good. to me. Yeah, sitting yeah. 240. That's like 100 pounds. Be 260. Yeah. Like I wanted lean, to. Lean, uh, I wrote this down. Is the number one thing I've talked about with you is like how I perce- perceived you on social media. Most people, it's like you meet them and they're smaller. But you like, dude, I thought, because I didn't look at your bio, it says like the 6'5 statue, which is true. Yeah. That's literally what you are. But I, I didn't know you were 6'5. Like, bro, looking at your photos, I think you're like 5'10, mm-hmm. 5'11, just because you're very proportionate, right? Oh, It'd be different dang. if you had long, long legs like me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have legs, so I look kind of tall in my photos. But you, dude, I thought you were like 5'10, maybe 5'11. <laughs> right. I saw you walking, I was like, that looks like the big show. <laughs> yeah, with, literally. But with hair. Yes. <laughs> yeah, You're way exactly. bigger in person than you are on social media. I feel like everyone it's said like, that about it's you like, too. Yeah, he's like yeah, six foot maybe person. on social media, six one, which is still kind yeah. of, which is still tall as fuck. I mean, to me it is at least. It's like a fucking giant six one. Yeah, it's and you see him, it's yeah. yeah, exactly, bro. He's fucking, the birds are hitting his like head. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, you know, walking up in here in person. He's like fucking six, seven. Yeah. Wait, is your mic good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I heard that. Too. <laughs> I yeah. just like see. I adjusted it. Yeah, make sure it's plugged in. Yeah, it is. All right, the first time. Bear with us. But yeah, dude. I think a big reason why is because like all your contents of you, which I love mm-hmm. that. I, I do the same thing. Most of it's of me. You don't take like group photos, like stuff like that. You just love making content by mm-hmm. yourself. So like you never have anything to compare it to. And I feel right. like a lot of people will say the same thing about me. Like they say, "Oh, you're taller in person," because I don't take that many photos with other people. Yeah. But Nah, dude, like you're massive and mm-hmm. it's just crazy how, you know, it's the difference between social media and real life. Cause like I said, most people it's the opposite. Like they're a letdown when you meet them in person. Yeah, like, Damn, dude. you really look like that. It's been like the theme of this. I mean, I'm not going to paint say names, but like, I'm just no, been, like, oh, it's true. like, okay. Yeah. Like not like I've never had like a whole oh, shit other than with you. I was like, dude, no, you're big. Like, like you have muscle. Like, you were like, oh, everyone's like, like, you told me before, like, do you think I'm whatever in person? I'm like, no, dude, actually like, yeah, you kind of like surprised it's me like, a humbly little bit. To hear. I'm like, That's I don't know like if like I caught you at the right, the perfect time or like yeah. what but nah, i was like nah dude. dog you look really good like you look like you, you lift yeah like, you're not, i appreciate you know it saying, nah so. bro it's crazy because yeah. i used to be way heavier and i looked way yeah. more yeah you were you were I had no you shreds. were dick yeah i was thick thing. too but like you're 265 fat, right now my heaviest was 240 so i was only not 25 really. pounds off holy shit wait yeah. what how much were you eric 240 240 well 242 damn like, dog i'll throw up a photo nice, on the damn. screen yeah nice, dude man. let me show you right quick god damn i'll throw up the photo then about to show uh zezzy but this Six, is the one, photo 240 you know how everyone milks I mean, that one you. transformation photo like this is mine yeah you look like you still lifted though dude, like that was the still, strongest i ever was yeah like, at 19 i benched 365 dude but to the average person, person, crazy to the average but we have to, me from yeah the he, side, he, think about it he looks like a football player like yeah, a big dude. football player that's like, what i was except i was like a, a some girls like that look though i was just a like a, just a man do sure like just drinking all the time that was yeah. spring break like dude i put on a lot of weight from just drinking yeah what was your body fat percent what was your body fat percent it was definitely up there no visible abs like like you think it was like cheeks. 25 definitely up there i have no clue like i'm really 20. bad at judging yeah, bad, body bad, fat bad. percentage because like yeah. everyone asks me what i am right now it's like i don't know like i've never gotten tested and yeah i feel like mean. most people i bet, I bet you're like lot. seven probably like eight i feel like it's in reality it's <laughs> i think he's higher seven. than what you actually are or what you think a lot of people say oh yeah bro i'm like seven percent like six percent it's like nah dog like you're like three weeks out from a show you know, I just don't yeah. put value to that, I'm, to be honest with you. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't I, put value to body fat percentage. And who, like, like you said, the girl thing, like, dude, if you're, if you're going after a girl who gives a fuck about what you look like yeah. at, at all like that, like, yes, to a certain extent, she has to be sexually and physically attracted to you. But, dude, if, if, if like, that matters to her, to me, just in my life, I'm like, all right, that's not as genuine yeah. as I would want a relationship to be. Yeah. As when I go into a relationship, you expect it to be, you know, forever. Facts. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. I feel like there's also a threshold to, like, your shreddedness and how much like a girl would find it attractive as well. Like there's a certain point to where like 
if you go from like say nine percent down to seven percent, you're just wasting your time at that point. If you if you're not just if you're just trying to be shredded to like get girls, whatever, like I don't know. But yeah. It's just for me, like I just like the look where I'm at right now. But back to what you're saying, like it is I wouldn't recommend most people do it. Like it is a lot for me to keep up with. Um like I miss being able to like be really free with my food, blah 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 like you know be bulked lifting is so much yeah. more fun because you feel like that's what house. i'm saying like i, like, dude, even I trained today, with him i mean we we're doing shoulder raises and like this man like doubled my weight just boom yeah. I, don't think that, I don't think so i don't think i was doing that but yeah i don't know you're strong dude but I am um, strong, but, yeah. but you don't power lift do you no no power. i don't yeah, do me neither barbell no anything really like yeah i really don't i'm a big dumbbell guy I like plate loaded machines like yes, you, like you I'm like the same way just still, like like oh, bodybuilding yeah. bodybuilding bro like getting a pump work. like oh my gosh yes yeah oh, that's real. crazy orgasmic i it, everyone i hear so many like you know like youtube videos and i just everyone's like oh just like that way you just gotta all you gotta do is just eat food you know what i mean like to get mm-hmm. strong and big it's just like so much about his eating and that's like what i'm literally doing now because it's like yeah and i feel so much better yeah in the gym and that i just yeah. like I mean, just car- when i wake up oh carb, carbs are a glamorous thing yes. yeah carbs, are, carbs are nice yeah but when your body has you know a, a surplus of them you're training so much more dialed in like yeah your endurance is way up there like you actually enjoy training like being yeah. shredded shredded where i'm at right now i can enjoy it but like you know two weeks out from then on it's like you're just dragging like yep. Cause yeah because you, you know you're not, not you're not building there. any muscle you're literally yeah. just maintaining what you have so literally. it gets to a point where it's like why am I if your training? protein's high, yeah, like if you had low low protein, yeah, then exactly. you'd be like, "Fuck!" You shrivel up, mm-hmm. yeah. Literally, what I did, I stripped all my muscle off my frame at one point, and then just started eating a lot of food and just like, yeah, you know, just started exploding. So. Um, I want to talk about like social media. So, like, how would you describe your content for nobody that has ever watched it? Because you're mainly on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. How would you describe your content for just the average fitness, you know, person in the fitness industry following other people? Um, whatever you see visually, you can. It was going to be subjective to what you're going to feel. So if that's motivational, if that's you know whatever that is, that's subjective and up to the person. But I think insightful. I think um, if you actually dig into the content, so the copy or, or the the caption of it, it would be insightful. Like giving your insightful means like bringing in some sort of new perspective into your mind that you didn't have before. So. Like I said before, that's the value that I try to bring on mm-hmm. my, my social yeah. media. But I pay a lot of attention to like like you, like the picture, the way the picture looks, the way it's the angle, the the color grade, like um, the aesthetic of it, the what it looks on the grid, like um, you know videos, like how it's edited. Does it you know does it drop on beat? Does it onto the beat? Like when you keyframe, like you know mm-hmm. like little things like that, like the art of it, the process of putting it out. I yeah. really enjoy. It. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy that. Hell yeah, your stuff is clean, dude. Um, Likewise, all of you, both of you. It's yeah. like I look. I don't even. You, that's why I said I when, when I saw his feet, I was like, it's similar to my aesthetic and our aesthetics. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. But I don't yeah. have like, fucking aesthetic abs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but dude, I, I, I'm gonna. I gotta get big though. Yeah, I'm gonna um, get size. But like, I really like your approach to social media because for like someone like me and Stan, where we're really trying to like push it hard with like growing our platform stuff like that. You take a very chill approach to it. Like mm-hmm. you're trying to build that cult. Mm-hmm. And I'm all about that, but like. I don't know. I get so caught up in like, oh, did I respond to all my DMs? Did I respond to all my comments? Like, right. do I have a post for today? Did literally, I post I go through stories? all my DMs. I yeah. literally respond to every single yeah. comment. Like, I would... Bro, I every would, comment. I'll literally scroll back to like weeks and make sure I respond. Like, like, still respond to comments. Yeah. But like, crazy. you were saying the other day, like, oh, bro, I've only posted like two stories today. But like, it, it didn't really bother you. Like, for me, it gave me so much anxiety because I always fear of like not posting enough content for my followers. It's like... I get stressed out about it in my head. I'm like, oh, did I post enough today? Are people going to continue to come back? Or like, yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't respond respond to all these comments. Like, are people still going to you know engage in my post? Is it going to do well? Like, I don't know. It, it's important to like sometimes take a very like lax approach to it. Literally, just post content that you love posting. Like for me, that's like a really good photo, good edit, whatever. Like a nice reel. And if it does bad, I like I'll get down about it. But like, I don't know. You you kind of like realize that the longer you do it, like people are generally going to mess with it. Cause you have like a cult behind you. Like you do really well with your brand. You're talking about like how many sales you make with less than 10,000 followers. Like that's very valuable. And, um, something I need to like remind myself of more, like as long as I'm just doing what I'm doing, like the cult's going to like, you know, gradually grow to Mm -hmm. where I want it to be one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like my big thing, like the reason why I enrolled also saw is like my engagement, like, they saw my engagement for how many followers I was having. And I was like, what is this guy doing? Like that yeah. was their first thing was like, what are you doing? Cause like I, I 
at first, like it was just me, how much time I was spending in outreaching. So going to on the Explorer page, you know, genuinely messing with people's stuff, sending them DMs, yeah, you know, right. giving, showing your personality to them and then commenting and commenting back and asking them like, not even just replying, but like being like, Hey, how was your day? Like, how was yeah, your day? Like, dude, being genuine. Right. you know, like, how was your weekend? Out, like, like, literally. Literally. Right. like, how was your mental been? Like just little things like that. Exactly. Like, that holy shit. People are like, Whoa, like that's that extra yeah. step. That, or like, just whoa. on your story when you're just like slide up asking questions, yeah. people be like, obviously like, Oh, like how many calories do you eat? Like what's your drinks? But people would be like, yo, bro, like how, how's your mental right, state right, right now? Like, and how it's you like, feeling, oh bro? snap. Like, yeah, I haven't even thought about serious, this. Right. How can I optimize my emotional intelligence? How can I optimize yes, my dude. time efficiency? Like those are the things I think about. Yeah. Like that's and I what love I see that, that story shit, and it's like, oh, and then snap. we, and then we get deep with each other and then, she, you know, like he is in Houston and then it's like, we connect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's My crazy. thing isn't food and like how to eat, how to train. Like a lot of people already do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm not that pro at that either. I fucking definitely not a pro at that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> I should not be talking about how to fucking eat, but I should be talking about how to train because I do like. Yeah. Train, like, hard train as fuck. Thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to in order to like maintain your physique. Yeah. Like. This is fun. I just really love it. I just like. Yeah. I just fucking. Pain. Fucking like up pain. the weight. Yeah. Just fucking <laughs> yeah, slim in the I full love pain, weight. dude. Um, I like to ask people this question. Um, like. Define one moment in your life, like a specific event that like you would say has been the most pivotal f to getting to where you are now today. Like one single Whoa. moment or event. Okay, think like, about you it. you guys go first? No, no, think about it. You you had to think of something. I mean, a lot. Like, I man, my hockey career, the drug phase, I mean, you know, getting out of a certain relationship, like um, that Miami trip, like there's been a lot, man, like. There's been so many. It's crazy to think like the one time because it's like everything that's happened, it feels like has led me to yeah, even this. Yeah, it's happened for a reason. Like even like sitting here with you yeah. guys. So it's like, damn, I wouldn't a, change a single fucking thing about my life and be like, yeah, all of them really are so special. And, yeah. But like, and, but damn, it's crazier. Like, it's, it's not just, it's not just the fact that everything that you've done in your life has led you to this. It's the fact that it's everything that Eric, yeah, me yeah, yeah. and you have we've all done to let us to this because right. if i made one decision in my life i wouldn't be here therefore you wouldn't be here yeah therefore eric would probably be somewhere else right. and 100%. you wouldn't even and no no you you never know you may have not even seen him in the gym right I would have probably exactly been yeah but. yeah so it's like it's not only that it's i i would have had it done that and eric literally everything that's happened to eric's life and my life and your life Wow. leads us right here <laughs> it's wild just like how the universe like works yeah, and twists same. all these different things and events together and like just takes different you know people that probably would just have never like met each other call together of eric and i yeah we probably already talked about it on yeah the first we did episode, even though this is recorded before but <laughs> yeah we definitely yeah, we definitely like, we, we definitely i don't know did, I'm, did I'm a big believer it. in everything happens for a reason yeah. I do, like to flip the question though instead of like the most pivotal like what do you think is the most defining or most important or like maybe your most favorite Event. Okay, I think first for for me it was definitely moving out of the house like early. Like I moved out of the house at fifteen. Yeah, that's like, crazy. And when you're fifteen years old, you're thinking about prom, like your little yeah. your little crush, and like, oh my god, is she gonna ask mm -hmm. her? Is she asking me like these little tiny micro things in our lives, right. and like your social life, and like your sport, and like you know, like just the yeah. little things. And Are so, you gonna make me a poster for <laughs> homecoming? <laughs> yeah, dude, Bro, like, you have to do it in such a corny way. Oh my god, god. I hated like, that because it's like Eric, you know what did you do? Instagram. Eric, 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 what did you do? Real quick, what did you do? I, um, my girl Wait, like, my was really working? into tennis. Yeah. yeah, my girl was really into tennis. So like, oh was, yeah, I, I know like, what you did. I drove by a um a tennis like. Oh yeah, Eric. Eric tips one on one right here, boys. And I put the tennis balls on the fence. And I said, oh, yeah, prom. Dude. I spelled it out with question mark. Uh, <laughs> I was with my buddy. I was, no. like, I was like, hey, I got to stop by my buddy's place to get my keys. Oh, uh, Eric wallet. was bricked. So cute. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I was a simp in high school. Anyways, wow. It's okay. Was that the girl that you've... <laughs> Chill. Okay. okay. No, no, no. It was, uh, yeah, my ex. Yeah. Anyways, enough about that. Yeah. Um, Good for you, Eric. <laughs> Chill. I, I love that. <laughs> You're okay. silly. Back silly to uh, goose. All right, uh, silly goose. <laughs> most like important moment, most defining that yeah. you were explaining. Yeah. Yeah, so moving out of the house to 15, that's just huh. like, it, it makes you more independent. It yes. builds your confidence. It shows you like, you know, like, yeah, you can still call your parents when your fucking, your tummy hurts and shit like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like you got to rub your own fucking stomach, take the meds yourself, like fix right. your car and your car battery's dead at 3 a.m. Like you still got to do that. So yeah, it pushed me into, a, you. yeah, it pushed me into more of a, a man quicker, I would say. And just like, dude, the life experience, like seeing, you know, 
different right. areas of the United States and Canada and like just stuff like that. Like being a man faster and just be, having to like literally be, have more responsibility faster. Yeah. That's why, that's what I attribute my college career most to. Cause like I was an accounting major. I didn't really retain any information I learned. I finesse, finesse my way through school, but yeah, it, I value like my, uh, my college from like the experience I got from being on my own, having all that responsibility, like paying my own bills, like just growing as a person, being away from my parents, like having to, you know, have full control of my life. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why like uh, one of the good things about college, you know, I right. feel like you, I don't, yeah. I don't believe that you have to go to college. I'm literally not using my degree at all today. Same but, dude. That's yeah, why like, I, yeah. Did you know, I, I dropped out. You knew that. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, literally, dude, I just yeah. fucking dropped out. But like, bro, I can't see you enjoy life, life a lot more right now. Right, doing what you love, you know. But it's good that you found oh, bro. that early. I, I was, was already like, all yeah. the way through. I knew I, I didn't want. I I knew I didn't want to right when I got there, and I was like, I want to drop out. And then my parents were like, "Give it some time," and I was like, F "I mean, okay, I guess I'll just listen to them, right?" Yeah. But it's like, I'm grateful enough and blessed enough that like they were paying for my tuition. Mm -hmm. But that's why I felt unfair to them. Because I felt literally so unfair because I was like, I literally feel like I'm wasting your guys' money on tuition and all this other BS I don't even, like, get care about or all give a fuck about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like you're spending bands on classes that you don't give a fuck about and you're, like, literally cheating. Yeah. On, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's so, that's a, it's like, I'd rather, like, just save that and just move here and start, yeah, like, my exactly. growth here. You can do it while you know you're I mean? young. You know, right, right? If all those fellows just... Yeah, exactly. I can always fucking go back. Yeah, it's not like... Literally, I can't go back to fucking 20, 21 years old again. Yeah. It's not like you're going to be broken, homeless on the street if it doesn't work out. Like, just always remember that. It yeah. wasn't even, like, that for me. It was, like, just the whole college lifestyle. Like, coming from, like, that drug phase and stuff, like, I, ever since then, I have not, you know... I do not want anything to do with going out on the weekends really all the time. Like, we just Same, did it. yeah, we just did it I don't really The other like night, but out. honestly, man, that was a lot. I don't even know, like last time like i yeah. don't like i don't like on the weekends i like to chill relax do like, hike, like do I, things with right. people that i love that are like remember i'd rather just and, like, like have yeah. people over real just experiences vibe, right like you know so but anyways like um yeah so just not like feeding for, i don't know if i saw i was going with that but um <laughs> no, that's the, that was the break that got to me there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um dude i had another question for you a really good one um oh so like you're on instagram a lot like what's I had this question in mind. Your favorite thing about Instagram and one thing you would change about it, mm. you know, for all, like, the social media people out there watching because I feel like you're on the app a lot, and so am I, and so is Stan. Yeah. Yeah, I try, I mean, yeah, I try not to be on it as much as, you know, as much as possible, but, yeah, I'm on it a lot. It's my favorite. It's been my favorite app for since it came out. I think I love the visual aspect of it. I love when it was just a photography app. It was yeah. mainly photography, like picture, like yeah. capture. If your life, you have some, you have a... I still wish it was like that. Oh, man. Just straight pictures because it's like, mm. you could have different apps. That's why you have a video app for a video app. Right. And then Instagram is like a picture app for a picture app. Or still let, like still allow video, but just don't prioritize it. Like don't yeah. literally funnel it to where like, if you want to grow a scene, it has to be a fucking reel. Like, yeah. To a trending sound. Like, <laughs> yeah, to a trending dude? sound. Like, yeah, like what kind, what kind of society what is, is that? that bro, a trending like, sound. I have to like, oh I have to make a video of me to someone other, like a video that someone made. And I have to like yeah. take she, their video and put it on mine. It takes all the like, creativity away from the creator. And just, yeah. it, it kind of like, I don't know. It just Dude. takes away a lot of creativity to conform to what's yeah. working. Like what? And everything just repeats and repeats and repeats. Yes. This goes into a bigger, a lot, lot, much larger topic, but like the whole thing of like uh, population control and kind of stuff like that. Like I think that, you know, TikTok is, is owned by a Chinese company. Their algorithm promotes engineering, educational videos, um, stuff that's really, you know, healthy for the brain and, and beneficial, whereas ours, they put But how is it not like fitness though? Stuff like that, right, is on theirs. But on ours, it's I've like heard trends, before, and yeah. it's like repetitive, like ways of thinking to make sure that we don't free think yes, and like I've heard this bad media news and like you know bullshit, like toxic relationship, like all that bullshit that well, we yeah, see on like ours, sexualizing like, too. Right, That's sexualizing, the thing bro. That, like, like oh my that really God. resonated with me when you think about it. Like guys for fitness, shirtless content is always going to do better. Shredded content yeah. is always going to do better. Girls, the more revealing you like, are, the the more you can climb the ladder of social so media sad, success. Man. Yes, I you know, it. and I f I feel like you know I'm definitely guilty of it. Yeah, uh, but it's just like that's what works. <laughs> You're like, hey, I've posted a couple of nudes of Instagram. <laughs> oh, no, not like that. Relax. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. Just like when you look at social media that way, like because we're so used to what we see every day. Yeah, you don't think about how like it could compare to 
under another uh, system of control, like over right. there in China, dude. Yeah. Like it's just like yeah, that's why like put, they're pushing us like with the reels to make us make quick reels, so because our attention spans are so short. It's so with bad. trending audios, because we all want to do the same thing, all yeah. be the same, not free think. It's like sad. It's like that's why my my content comes in. I'm like I'm trying to get you to free think for one second, just fucking free think about this topic yeah. for a second. Get off it. Go back to your scene, Literally, Corvette, dude. Corvette, and then fucking you know, yeah. Like, yeah. They don't realize what's real. What's <laughs> yeah, not. What the hell are you doing? Go to your Corvette. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> to get views for a trend. Yeah, dude, like, like and 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 it and oh it works. God, it literally it does. Like, TikTok's like, oh fuck yeah, yeah, yeah put a face to that. Yeah. <laughs> he puts oh on the for you page and it blows up. Two point three million views. iPhone video, four hundred forty eight yes. p potato quality. Oh yes. my Shows god. Off. Yeah, literally, I'll post a, I'll post like a motivational video of like C bomb, <laughs> and then it'll be like fucking sexual nudity. Yes, you block, got you bitch today. ass. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're like you're like tra- whole transformation from like 17 to like yeah. you know super like emotional, so much real yes. effort. Yeah, it's like boom, block. No, yeah. nothing. It's literally. Like, dude, yeah, this girl, this it's little like, like underage chick, like talk boy, about how your dog <laughs> literally like passes away. It's like oh, boom, block, God, harassment, so bullying. So, you're so like, sad. Yeah. Um, this is like my last year's question for you. We got some a uh, few minutes left, mm-hmm. but we talked about this the other night, and I feel like you could definitely explain some more. You asked me if, like, just I've always had an innate feeling that I was gonna do like successful things, like be an above average person, be doing above average things. Mm-hmm. You know, have you um, like explain that for yourself? Have you always had that feeling you'd be, you know, where you're at today? Because you went through a lot of highs and lows, mm-hmm. and I feel like a lot more lows than most people in it experience a lot. But have you always felt like you were gonna do something? bigger than just mm-hmm. like you know the american dream yeah so yeah I've, i mean i definitely i always had that feeling in my in my it wasn't it's like a belief it's a feeling it's like not even like a like a manifestation thing it's like you just i've always known it's i felt it in my gut and my balls and my fucking skin like i've just always known that what i apply my whatever i apply my 100 percent to that it will be successful because i applied myself but when i really realized and had that feeling was when I've, I, one thing I like, I love about myself is that I, I know exactly what I want. I know who I am. Yeah. I know how I feel at all times. I know exactly how I feel about someone X, Y, B. I'll, I'll say it. I'm brutally honest. Yeah. Like self-aware. I'm just very like, I love that. So right. as soon as I was able to come to terms with that with myself and have the self love and the self, you know, emotional intelligence of myself, that's when I knew, okay, if I apply my skill set that I have with the knowledge that I have, with the emotional intelligence that I have, like, you know. It should be, it should be yeah, it should, my right. version of successful. Everyone's version is different. Subjective. What your so success true. is like, yeah, I yeah. Love that. So, you know, whatever makes you happy, like whatever exactly. your success is. It all is, comes down to just like what makes you happy. Yeah. Right. Happiness, yeah. man. Like, Literally. I mean, you can't put a price on happiness. No. Can't do Dude, it. It's the most rare thing. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm glad I, fi- I figured out that while I was in college before I had to, you know, figure out what I was doing in life. But, you know, mm-hmm. I'm the happiest I've ever been. It seems like the same thing for you guys. Yeah. Like you're doing exactly what you want to do. Right. Like hockey, Dude, like, do you with know, the people you want, with the exact people that yeah. align with you. Like, do you know who it's beautiful, you, bro. He would fuck, you guys would fuck with, Eric knows him kind of, John Cluth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shout out John Cluth. Um, I know he'll be watching this, but he literally is like so great with that, right? Like he'll literally always talk about like people, he'll do the Q&As and people will be like, Oh, like how many followers you want? Like on YouTube, what's your goals? Whatever, and people are like, what's your goals? Seek meaning that, but he, someone who just goes like, what's your goals, right in mm-hmm. life? And he, and he was just like, just to be happy, you know what yeah. I mean? Shit like that. So and I he literally always is like, dude, money can't money. Yeah, you dude. can't put a price on happiness. And it's like if you really think about that shit, that's like so true, dude. Like that's so true. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's, you know what I mean? there's not many people who can wake up every day like genu- genuinely happy with what they're doing in yeah. life and like mm-hmm. excited for the day and that's me but every think day. about it i love yeah that. exactly and think about it. it's like they you could even like your job but you could wake up and be like oh i don't want to go you know what i mean but and then that's that's the still right thought there, of bro. yeah exactly that initial thought of you like dreading oh. it for a second that's how you that's how you so much you know that's yeah. that's not what for you right because you you wake up and, and be like oh i got this today right. this this is and i can meet up with like these people right you know i i have this post ready um i can like talk about like I'm meeting the, uh, let's say like weekly check-ins with like my clients, you know, and how well they're doing, you know, all this shit, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. you're getting such good feedback from like this podcast, like, bro, like you, I related you to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're like, damn. And then it's like, soon you're getting like actually like paid for it. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's like apply that to everything. Apply it to your relationships, your friendships. Because I'm like helping people out, right? if you're not happy with them right away and like they don't align with you 100%, you shouldn't even be wasting right. your time, bro. Yeah. Time is so goddamn valuable and like coming, you know, for everyone has different perspectives, but like, 
you shouldn't be here if you've had a close to de- like near death you know experience like then you know like how valuable like or just in general like you just can get taken at any time so right yeah. yeah i like that all right let's do one more cut and then finish up all, all right, right. we we'll back welcome back i am actually making a story post right now saying i'm not gonna well obviously you guys will know the ad of this because it's the fucking youtube and we've plugged it but to this time right now i'm posting on my story saying we drop in at soon oh for the pod yeah yeah because we haven't dropped it yet yeah we to this video but obviously when you guys see it we will i literally made the youtube banner today go check it out i worked like two hours yeah it's actually hard as fuck is is the painting gonna be um the profile picture picture yeah (laughs) picture (laughs) yeah no that'll be the the profile photo like that dope cartoon you see of sand and i hopefully it's up by now it came out good but yeah yeah no it's been sick like being able to brand all this stuff um Mm -hmm. we still got to get the backdrop in the back you'll see that soon Mm -hmm. um all right we're trying to deck it yeah gotta get some lights and shit we're trying to like Mm -hmm. i don't know have a really aesthetic setup that way we don't have to change it down the line so y'all see it change pretty soon um but yeah finish up with I guess we're like almost an hour and a half in like this sounds corny, yeah. but like what words of advice would you give to just anyone who's like maybe to your younger self, anyone who's just trying to figure themselves out in life mm. to be successful. Like you've been through a lot. Um, sum it up. Like, what would you say? Man, if I could give someone, man, it's like, that's crazy. Right? Like I think, you know, I think everything should lead into you finding more about yourself. So that requires you to have more life experience. That requires you to be, you know, um, you know, more more valuable with your time or who you surround yourself with or what you're doing. Just trying to figure out ways to understand you more. So if that requires you to read more books or you know, just educate yourself, be a listener, um, you know, take chances, you know, have experiences. Like try things when you're young. I think when you're young is when you have the least amount of responsibility and the least amount of reper- repercussions. Like. That's when you should be, you know, dicking off doing those things. But you know, once you got, you know, when you're an adult and you got stuff rolling, like you should already be, you know, one with yourself and you yeah. know, kind of figuring that out. But that makes sense. Um, staying true to yourself, like, man, if you're around people where you know deep down, like, how you were raised, why you're born, like, this doesn't align with you, your parents, what you believe in as a person, like start by taking the initiative, the actual action, right? Like, words don't mean shit. Right. Action means everything. Like. People can tell you everything they want, but it, their action really shows it represents their character. So um, I would say just actually being able to, you know, practice acting on that, right? Like, oh, I don't believe, I don't, this person just said something I don't believe and act on it. Say, you know what? Oh, like, I didn't appreciate you saying that. Like, those little practices exactly. and repetitions will then apply to like your big boy decisions mm-hmm. that you make in life and, you know, what you align with. And so identifying who you are, you know, being one with yourself, having self love, and then, you know, actually living that, like, actually, you know, lo- just living with how you think and how you breathe and like you have a dna helix on you as well as i have it on Hell myself yeah. like I love that. staying true to yourself and what mm-hmm. you are so that's crazy that good yeah y'all take notes damn i love that yeah and then uh to finish up with like you're, you're 22 bro you're mad young like we're all young but what what's your ultimate goal with what you're doing whether it's iron will your content everything like mm-hmm. where do you want to be in however many years like what's your ultimate end goal like where do you see yourself as like damn like i made it like my damn, I made a moment will definitely be, and this is going to, and someone's going to have some monetary, someone's going to have some material in it because I just am generally right, into that. exactly. Like, I appreciate yeah. those things, but first off. Like, instead of, like, Audi R8. Right, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. First off, like, happy, just blissfully happy, Boom. like, just so happy just to live every day. Family, I'm a big family guy. Um, you know, start a family and have a, you know have a wife and be married and you know start a family like that and see them grow and teach them things that i got to do in my life and you know be a a role model for someone like that um and it would be financially freedom like just being financially free being able to do what i want when i want being my own boss um i want to build a legacy and a blast little impact on you know whether that's a business life or on people's life so um whatever that you know comes to be i don't know what that is specifically right now but yeah um yeah. i would say that and, damn you know just having to worry about things and then it'd right. be a stage three mclaren 720s uh <laughs> done by sheepy racing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would also make me happy i know it will damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'm gonna remember that yeah Hell that's yeah. crazy and, yeah some do you know what eric and i is <laughs> uh moment is when we've officially made it this is in my notes app i yep. put it on there is right when, when it happened is when we do you want to say it eric no you go ahead okay so you're a good storyteller <laughs> yeah so we literally right so our our made it moment right mm-hmm. when we were going to pick out couches right this we got this like couch this is the this last one, right one we got right wow. it was the Ironic. cheapest one we found and the surprisingly the biggest because yeah. it was on facebook market that's Fuck. nice nice grab 
Oh yeah. No, yeah. we finessed it. Yeah. So anyways, finessed. we would go in the store and all these stores were like hella expensive we as fucking Ford, like but like from the literally outside, like it looks, bougie it looks like a like a meth lab bougie. yeah it literally looks like jail <laughs> like prison. Like <laughs> yeah it looks like jail prison. bars over yeah, yeah. and they're like sorry it, it looks a little sketchy in the name here, it, was, um, it looks a little sketch the name of it was like it, big deals or something like yeah, yeah. Big, big, deals. Deals. big great <laughs> value deals yeah. Yeah. yeah and none of them were big deals yeah they were cock blocks right so we were literally like and they don't get me wrong, they were insanely nice couches, but shit you literally see in like the the Kardashians, mm-hmm. like fucking living room, like room and board, yeah. yes, restoration hardware. Literally, literally, it was all like a couch was like five bands, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Right. totally the yeah. wrong. Like, and so Eric wrote in our notes, luck story short, we met the dude. He like whatever the fuck he was funny about it because we couldn't afford that shit, and we told him <laughs> even though he showed us like a two band dollar couch, and we're like, bro, we're just like college students basically. Like fucking, yeah, we're not we're even just called. Got a, just got a new apartment. Yeah, like, literally, bro. It's like we're trying to get like, K. yeah, under a K at least. Show just like, a, he's like, well, we got this one. And it's it's like, like, oh, y'all K. can finance too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like bro, what? can I pay him for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, it, we were walking out, and Eric was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I mean, we'll we'll be back in one year, and we're gonna come right back to you. And he's like, oh, I'll be there because he was like yeah. the owner, right? And he and Eric was like, in one year, we're gonna buy the most expensive couch. In this store, I got it. I got it, and he wrote it down. Yeah, so (laughs) we we I guarantee. So I think, like in a matter of time, like manifesting, right? In one year, we can go back there. At next level furniture. Next level well, furniture. Next level furniture. Once we yeah, get and to that next level, the nicest couch. I'm unlocking that couch. I'm not saying I'm not saying we're just gonna save up for it. We're gonna be comfortably able to just like willing like, oh yeah, just let's let's just get that couch. And it's like, you know, like a four thousand, five thousand dollar couch. Just for like a Hell little, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, when you can splurge on little things like that, that's when that's you, what I'm we're saying. We're gonna get our value out of this couch though. We gotta And run Eric this wrote in the notes nice. just so like we could always remember because like say we'll make a YouTube video a year later, but guys like remember this, like we didn't get it on video, obviously, but I have it in yeah. my notes right here, as you can see. But we're right. sitting on this couch right now. It was four hundred bucks mm-hmm. on Facebook. Dude, I'm kind of mad that I spent what I spent on mine now. Yeah, Dude, shout when out we to got, Ronnie yeah. from Facebook. Bro, when we got <laughs> when we got this couch, like his kids were calling over it. He was like picking out like Nerf bullets. <laughs> in the oh cracks. my god, <laughs> dude, it's fire! Like he's in good condition. Yeah, he was like, I was like, dude, bro, Ew. this is perfect. We literally took his whole living room. <laughs> he had in nothing else in there. <laughs> shout out Ross for the silver. Yeah, room. yeah, shout out Ross. Right. You're fucking G, dude. Anyways, let's end it on a light note. So. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the first one, but I want to do like a top five every uh, podcast, yeah. top five anything. So mm. for you, I think we talked about this top five diet sodas because you're Ooh. like Stan and I, you love yeah, diet soda. Right. I'm a fiend Eastern. for anything yeah. diet, zero sugar, whatever it is. Yeah, you bro. could drink. Top five. And then you get a beer that, you, that will not get you fat. Like, yeah, exactly. And then you could binge kind of. Oh, like, literally. I, I have three a day. At yeah, 100%. Yeah. Damn. First one for sure would be... Uh, Zero sugar, Dr. Dick, Pepper cream, cream soda. soda. Oh, yes. Yeah. We just got that. that the cream yeah, soda. Cream one, soda. Man. That's like, the number one. That's, that would be my goated. answer. 100%. Yep. Sugar, no, zero sugar, cream soda, Dr. Yeah. Pepper. That is fucking gas. The A&W one's good Gasoline. too, but Dr. Pepper just for some it's reason. It's insane, bro. It's I'll get hard. Yeah. <laughs> literally drinking those. Yeah. We're going to have to clip that. And then um, <laughs> I think my other one is uh, literally diet, diet cherry Dr. Pepper. Is that my yeah, yeah and that's the second one I have. Yeah, that's the one that's have, all literally. I have in my you fridge. Got diet Dr. Pepper yeah, right there, right there. <laughs> yeah, I literally, bro. Look at it. This is the yeah. chair yeah. I just destroyed. <laughs> so um, that's the only two I get. Hmm, those two. Yeah, I would think, dude. I like. Cher- I think cherry coke is different than than Dr. Pepper. I, I would yeah. take a diet cherry coke. Um, and then I like the the zero sugar sprite, like lemon lime one. Yeah, that I'm one's really that. good too. Because Eric's it's Mountain Dews are good though. Yes. I need to try that. I don't think I'm going to have one when you leave. It's yeah. like Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Spark. Really mm. hard to find. It's Last so one at good, Walmart bro. yesterday. Mm. Yeah, that shit's so gas. Mango Zero Sugar Pepsi. Dude, I look at when I try one. Pepsi. Yeah, no, we can have it after. Pepsi's yeah. interesting. Yeah, we need to get a diet soda to sponsor the pod. That's a good YouTube bro, video, too. Yes. Our segment in YouTube Guys, video. Okay, yeah. how, we need to get the fucking nut butters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we should bring them up. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let's we, show them no, next time. No, and not in a bad. Like we want, we want. Okay, never. I'm not just gonna say anything from it. Yeah, it's it's good. It's it a good thing. None. It's a good thing though. <laughs> but um, anyways, let's just okay carry on. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so one more. Okay. That was four. Hmm. <laughs> I don't even drink five. I don't think. Dude, I stick with my. I stick with like right. my, my go tos. 
Honestly, man, I, that's I, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's like, a good list. I, yeah, I love really all those. List. Um, Dr. Pepper's king to me, honestly. A lot of yeah. people I'll meet, they're like, you, no, I don't like diet soda. They're like, Ew, it's so gross, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's a cheat code. It's zero yeah. calories. Yeah, literally. Oh I love God. diet soda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really long episode. Zezzy, appreciate you big time. We're definitely they, having you on you, soon. Yeah. I know you're talking about getting some real estate. Yeah, yeah soon, dude, so. I'm going to... It yeah, if any of you guys want to move into this complex, by the way, <laughs> it's super cheap. And but the, you guys gotta it promise is. me if you guys move into here, it is you guys gotta use us as your referral. We've already referred mm-hmm. three yeah, people. Yeah, we've referred three people. Off? I don't know yet. They're yeah. calling me tomorrow. Yeah, so Good. at least get a and it's super cheap, you guys. It's literally in Stafford, Stafford, Texas. It's a four minute dead ass. Don't, hey, don't even, tell them where we live, bro. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> so you better Here's drop address. the address. This is where you can find me every day. I'm if just, I I'm trust just, you, I will let you. Yeah. Know. I'm, well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, the people that watch this are like chill. Yeah. But okay. Anyways, just don't pull up to our place. Yeah. That's, well, that's no. All I'm, I'm just. I'm, all I'm saying is, it's a three. It's literally a four minute dead ass. No, no exaggeration. Four minute drive from Alpha Land, right? Yeah. And so, everyone lives so around quick. us. Like literally, like the farthest thing I go to is fucking Palm Beach Tan, and it's twelve minutes. Yes, dude, that's Same. the farthest. I went there today. Every, tr- someone yeah. tried to break in there. Yes, <laughs> bro. I I told her that I I, I put uh, on my about, story today. Wait, I, I like, talked to her about that. Yeah. Do you want to hear what happened? Yeah, real quick. Okay, no okay, real quick. Okay, <laughs> so going, like, yeah, <laughs> okay, so I actually out. talked to her because I was wait, the last. Wait, customer. did you go tanning today? Yeah. Oh, dude, so did I. Yeah. The very end. I can't believe she let me. They close at seven on Sundays, and I went at like six fifty eight. And oh, I tan yeah. the whole time. So, anyways, that's clutch. I was the last person out, but the door on Paul Beach Tan, it <laughs> it's all glass. But today there was a huge like um, wood, wood panel, sh- yeah, panel on, on the whole door, and said just don't touch or use the other door. I put it up on my story. Yeah. Bro. Okay. So then there's the girl in there, and um, we're literally like close now because she always like fucks up my yeah, dude, last she, name. Yeah, she memorizes mine as soon as yeah. I go in there. She doesn't ask you. Yeah. But anyways, I was walking out. And she was at the door. She was like locking up. I was like, what happened to your door? And she was like, oh, she was like, and she said so like sweet, you know, but I was like, what the fuck? She's like, oh yeah. So like, there's these like, um, burglars over there and they were trying to bust through the door and they couldn't bust through though. So it was shattered everywhere. What are you going to take? That's why I said, that's, why I said, no, and then, and then, that's Paul, exactly what I said to her. I was like, I was like, that's so crazy. I was like, but out of all these places right here, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm going to the taste. dessert or the bakery right yeah. next to it. And it's like, bro, it's like, number one, it's like, 100% it's like, hell yeah. okay, well, number one, it's like, people don't walk into Palm Beach Tan and, and pay for a membership in cash. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you, you have a card on file. Right, you have a card on file. And it's like, bro, it's like, there's probably no cash in there. And plus, it's like, if you can't even break through the door, how the fuck are you gonna break in the safe? Yeah, no shot. You know what I mean? And it's like, what, do you, what the fuck are you gonna take? You're gonna, you're gonna take a fucking tanning bed <laughs> you might as well get a crane yeah it's like what the hell and then but yeah she was like oh yeah they were like over there and then they were like they hit up like another place too to try to break in and i was like bro there's even cameras around yeah. here like Fool. that's the reason why they're doing what they're doing is because they're idiots and they're criminals that's why if uh if y'all need a place to tan go to palm beach tan as well i have like seven referrals <laughs> code ogle at the yeah they need to hook me up with the code i have like seven referrals at the one in sugarland anyways yeah we're gonna cut it right there um for our first guest, I think that was a yeah. dope ass spot. Yeah, thank oh, you. So, yeah, dude. Big thank you for being on. Like, we're definitely gonna run it back whenever you're, you're we're back. We're about to eat all these hours. <laughs> come back for summer shredding. So that'd be a dope time to yeah. run it back. Just kind of yeah, it's see like where see where at. we are. Right, In just three short months. Yeah, you know? or yeah, exactly. It's like damn, like. We literally had no subs on this, right? Yeah. When we're filming right now, right. we have we literally made the channel yesterday. Yeah, so we have zero, zero subs. subs. Oh no, zero I subs to, to this it. moment. So one. Yeah, so one sub. Next time you come back, let's see how many subs we have. Yeah, like we, okay. I, if let's say like if we have like three hundred, that's a that's a good amount, that's insane. right? Yeah. But yeah. or it could be like three thousand or thirty k or three hundred k. Three hundred. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> I mean, right. you never know. Yeah, let's cut it right there. Uh, let's plug the sponsors real quick. So for myself, I got Anabars, uh, Code Ogle on everything. Yep. Anabars, and a butter, all that good stuff. These are my three favorite favorite flavors. But go check it out. Links down below. Stan. Yeah, that's just Gorilla Code Stanio. Get you freaking wired. But the <laughs> the I love the. I was just talking. Um, they should make more protein flavors because the protein is fucking. Yeah, awesome. no, I love, love Gorilla. But protein. to to be clear, guys, this is, we don't. This is not like. Uh, podcast sponsor. This is just our individual. Yeah, individual just sponsors. Individual we have ones. no like podcast sponsor. Yeah. So that's just we just figured we just like yeah. put that there. Everything Alpha Elite, Code Ogle, just a little, like, Code Stanio, Young LA. Yep, all that good shit. Zezzy, Zephyr, plug the code real quick. Iron Will, Code Zezzy. Hell yeah, bring, bring it up. up. 
But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If uh, y'all want to go see some more Zezzy's content, go follow him on IG <laughs> at Zezzy Flex. Zezzy Flex. Tell him, uh, send him a DM, say he's from the pod. Just call him yeah, Zezzy Daddy. Sick. He prefers that <laughs> in the DMs. But yeah, um, oh my God. appreciate you guys watching episodes every Sunday or Monday. Yep, Sunday or Monday. Yep, go follow the IG maybe. at uh, yo.cast. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, or yo cast. We, it's, it's right now it's yo.cast, right? Yeah. Correct. But I am trying to work on it. And if you guys can help me, I'm trying to work on getting yo cast. The guy hasn't been active in like 10 years. I'm going through literally his followers and DMing them to try to get me to respond to like him. Cause yeah. he's, you know what I mean? So help us out. Go spam them. But, yeah. And yeah. be like, yo, like <laughs> check, be check like, the yo, DMs. Yo, <laughs> Yo cast. Yo cast. Yo, you trying to work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. It's, it's Yo cast because his name's like Yo Man. Right. We gotta cut it, bro. We're gonna go way too long. All right, okay, that's a wrap. Okay, okay. We'll see y'all the All next right. one. Peace. All right, peace out, guys. <laughs>